Testing. Hey, there we go. You should be able to hear me now. And good. All right. So, coding game. If you want to uh, follow me, you can use this link here, or you can search for our Dallas here and find me there. Uh, if you want to follow me, I'll try and, and follow you back. That's how friends work in coding game. Uh, before I had sound working, all I said was go to codinggame.com, which I'll throw in here as well. And from there, you'll be able to uh, join the game, right? So when you start this Fall Challenge 2020, it's basically the dueling witches trying to produce potions as quickly as they can. Uh, Coding Game also has a bunch of other challenges and things you can do just to kind of try and improve as a developer. So they can be a lot of fun. Uh, so check those out. For me, I'm already working on this bot. Uh, so when you get started, uh, where's your starting stuff? I threw all this junk up the top. Um, hmm. Let's see. Here's your, your start information. Right? So you've got this main app that runs. I'm doing it in C Sharp. Uh, there's a game loop, so it just keeps on going. Uh, you've got some orders that you want to produce. You've got spells that you can use to, to get more spell components. Uh, you've got some different actions uh, that you can take. And this whole loop here, they give you. So what this does is it basically parses the input. And I, I've dumped the input that you get here down in this game information uh, space. So this is the debug uh, that I'm using just to help me. But it shows you what you're getting uh, on these lines. And so it parses all these with, with a bunch of read line statements uh, to get what the current state of the game is. Uh, and what the game is basically all about uh, is here. You can see there's two, two witches, two bots. Mine's the one on the left, this is the one on the right. And you're trying to produce uh, certain potions for your customers. And so, hey, Snowfrog, thanks for the raid. Uh, hopefully you're joining me in just a minute. So uh, Snowfrog is, uh, is Phil, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he's uh, coming in with uh, a raid with a few viewers, so welcome. Uh, he's been working on this as well. He's probably a little bit further ahead than I am. Um, but I'm just going over real quick a review of what this fall challenge is uh, before I get started and show what my code looks like. I'm hoping Phil's going to join me on Skype. Um, so when he calls in, I'll just take a second and, and get him uh, into the stream as well. Uh, actually, they're also still in Wood 1. All right, so I'm in Wood 1 League uh, with a rank of 102 somehow. I don't know how I'm that good um, with, with my bot so far. But um, I'm going to be coding this in Visual Studio uh, to try that. I haven't, I haven't done that before. In the past, I've always just done this inside the browser, which works pretty well. Um, but you can actually do it in Visual Studio. And then I, I've got a utility that someone wrote um, that's on GitHub. I'm going to use that utility to copy my code into uh, the IDE here for the game. Okay, so what are the rules for this game? Well, it changes a little bit as you advance to different levels. The very first level is super easy. All you have to do is produce a few potions. Um, and the way you do that is you see which orders are coming in with these actions. And Phil says he'll be here in a minute. Uh, sounds good. Uh, and so you, you look at these actions. Let me just make it so it's not gray. Uh, and so for instance, this one is action ID 66. You're going to brew this potion. That's the type of command you have to do is a capital B-R-E-W. Um, and then it tells you what its cost is in terms of spell components. So there's four different types of components. There are these different colored things you see, the, the blue, green, orange, and yellow. Um, and they're just designated as tier 0 through tier 3 components. Um, so down here, it shows you 0, 1, 2, and 3. Right. So that's your map of what the graphics look like in terms of your code. Um, in the very first uh, iteration, which I've already passed, um, you're going to have some spell components already. And you're just going to be asked to brew uh, the things that are coming in. Um, and, and you just have to pick one and then give the right command. So when you first start, you won't be actually giving a valid command. Uh, you just have to now update your code so it can pick one of these and then say brew this ID. And it'll create it for you. Uh, when you get to the second level, this, this new tier that I'm on, um, now, these different things have components that you don't have yet. Uh, and so they add a, a, a way for you to add more components, which is this notion of spells. And so 
Uh, for this version of the game, I have these four spells that uh, are here. And if you mouse over, you'll see their action ID, their action type. So the action that I can do for my turn, instead of saying brew a potion, I can now say cast this spell. Um, and so when I cast a spell, uh, it's going to um, then do whatever it does to my inventory. So for this top one, it just adds to blue, right? So you see it's delta is it adds two tier zero elements to my inventory uh, and doesn't change any of the other ones at all. Um, but then I can convert blue to green. So this is minus one blue plus one green uh, and then from green to orange and from orange to yellow. So I can, with subsequent turns and effort, I can produce the, the tier three materials um, that are needed for some of these. Uh, usually the, the higher cost uh, orders have more expensive components. So this one here is 11. It takes three blue, which I start with three blue, and then it takes two of these yellows. Now you can see I have the, the necessary uh, components here to make that, but my witch isn't smart enough yet to do it. Um, so I, I haven't created the, the AI to be smart enough to know how to do that. All right, so uh, let me see what people are saying here. I just finished my code of wood one. Going to test it for the first time. Cool, Vlad. Good to hear it. Uh, I just got to bronze. Haven't implemented bronze rules. Just vibing for a bit. Uh, I know that soft locked. My bot soft locked in that situation. Six blues and three degrees until I finally managed to fix it. Okay. Yeah. So so I don't know what is causing that necessarily. Um, but I don't have a lot of AI in this bot that's in here yet. I've been working a lot in Visual Studio and I haven't pulled that into this code yet. Um, so I need to, to do that. So uh, what this isn't good for is unit testing. And I find unit testing to be valuable. And also part of why I do these code challenges to try and improve my, my abilities as a, as a developer. And part of that is you know, writing better quality code. So since I'm doing this in C Sharp, I'm not using a you know, more functional language. I'm going to think about how do I model this in C Sharp classes and objects and, and what would be a, the right interface to use for this. So my initial look at this here um, was I would pick an order that I wanted to work on. Um, and in the very first iteration, I just picked the one that gave me uh, the cheapest marginal cost, I think it was. Yeah, I said order by. Um, and so whatever was the easiest one to create, uh, I would use that one. And I was calculating the marginal cost based on whether or not I had uh, the inventory for it. So some of that I've added for, for the second stage. Um, so, so that was a pretty easy one. And then... Down here, I didn't have any of this before. All I all I had before was brew the thing, right? So the first one was choose this ID uh, that I need, and then console write line brew that ID was what I had for the first iteration of the bot. Now I have to pick what to do, right? I don't have enough components on, on the first turn to actually brew something, so I've got to choose to do something else to try and get me there. Um, and so randomly, I could just say, hey, if I if I need components, I can just pick a spell that's castable, Castable means it's not grayed out and, and not usable. Um, and if I have any castable spells, then cast it. Um, and probably what's happening here where my bot got stuck is it probably found out that there is a castable spell here, this number 78, um, and I don't have the inventory for it. If I try and cast spell 78, there won't be room. Uh, and so it'll fail, presumably. Um, and when it fails, it's, it's going to just keep trying to do that over and over again, I'm sure. Um, so if I look at my what I'm doing here, I'm saying brew 66, uh, it looks like. So our Dallas attempted not enough ingredients for order 66. Which one is 66? This one. So I would need two blue, a green, and a yellow. And for some reason, I think I've got enough to do that. Um, so my, my marginal cost code here that's supposed to find out if I, if I can afford to produce something is broken. So I need to, to fix that. Thanks for the follow, Trent7. Um, Cut your name. This would be very cool for me to try and then improve by checking out your solutions. Yep. So usually Code and Game doesn't doesn't like for you to blog about or put stuff in GitHub for their solutions, but they are okay with streamers streaming about it just as a way to get the word out and get more people into it. Um, so you can definitely go back and watch a recording of the stream and see kind of my thought process. I do have my code in GitHub, but it's a private repo, so I can't share that. Um, but you'll be able to see all the code that I'm going to work on today during this stream. All right, so, so let's go look at um, what I've got in Visual Studio. Uh, there's two things. So there is this coding game compactor service, and I can share that with you. That's, that's this URL here. Let me give you the, the real one. I forked it so I could make any updates if I needed to. Um, but this 
GitHub repo that I'm pasting into the chat uh, is is where you can go if you want to work on this in Visual Studio with with C Sharp or um, you know any other .NET language. Then it will copy the code into a, a text box that you can copy paste into the game. Uh, I have not actually tried that yet. So. Try that. All right. So if I can. Phil, hey. hey, there he is. Look at that. How's it going? Good. You? Good. Uh, let's see. Hopefully everybody can hear you. Uh, on the stream, say something again. Testing one two. My name is Phil. All Hi right. everyone. I think it's working. All right. Cool. Uh, cool. So if you can't hear Snowfrog, uh, tell me on the chat. But I think I think it's all working. All right. All right, so I was just showing the uh, this coding game compactor thing that I, I downloaded. Uh, Tom Kirby wrote it, uh, and basically it has a little bit of config you set. So this is where my code is, is in this coding game fall 2020 folder. Uh, I'm telling him to exclude the tests folder and obj folder. Uh, and then this is just like a WinForms app. Uh, and so when I run this, I just control F5, uh, it gives me this little window here, and it's got a bunch of junk in it that I don't really care about, but hopefully won't matter of these this commented out assembly stuff and all this junk. I'm hoping that doesn't hurt anything in the actual bot code. Uh, and I don't remember, like I don't have the actual program in my code, so that's the other thing that's going to be a challenge. Um, so I didn't pull the program over. So I've got all the pieces I need. Maybe if I get rid of the namespace, that would be better. Hmm. Uh, or I've got to pull the program in, which is another option. Uh, maybe I should just do that. So, okay, so let's look at the, the browser code here. And what I've done is I've taken all of these other classes that are up here, and I've pulled those out. Uh, and the only challenge is going to be that they're in their own namespace, which I could get rid of. Uh, and they have their own using statements. But I think if I... I think I can get that to work. If I get rid of the namespace and you keep the using statements, it'll probably be fine. So let's let's try that. I want to get this working first, and then we'll work from Visual Studio. Um, that's not the right one. So where's my other Visual Studio? Uh, hey, Steve, do you think you could um, share your screen with me? Uh, yeah. Is that possible? Or? I should be able to do that and still share it with everybody else. Um, I think it's that one. So... Otherwise, I can just watch it your your Twitch yeah, no, stream, delay. but there's like yeah. there's a little bit of a delay there, so right. it's kind of right. weird. All right, so you see my Visual Studio yeah, screen now? I can. Hopefully? Yeah, all right, perfect. Cool. Uh, all right, so there's my Solution Explorer. I've just got uh, everything is in one file, but the the goal is that I could get rid of all these uh, everything in one file, and I could break it up into different files like one normally would, um, and still get the namespaces and everything else to work. So I'm gonna ditch my root namespace here and here, and just put everything in the default namespace. And then we'll see if that affects anything here. My tests are going to need to get rid of that namespace as well. But if we rebuild, see how much stuff breaks. That worked. All right, so now uh, this thing I can start to break up into its respective folders or files. So we'll take potion and move it to its own thing. We'll take inventory, move that to its own thing. Shortfall. And I'll talk through what, what my thoughts are on these things in a minute when we get into it. Um, but we can kind of break all these classes I've created into their own files, which was the whole point of doing this in Visual Studio. And then we'll be able to navigate through here a little nicer. But the other thing to check, there we go. Now everything's in its own file. It's a lot nicer. The other thing to check is if we come back to this other app, and is there a way to refresh it? Regenerate. There we go. Uh, okay. So I regenerated it. It doesn't have the namespace. It's got all this other stuff. I think if I just do Control A, Control C, let's see how badly this breaks. Coding game. Uh, if I find up to player and then kill everything above it. That's not what I want. Control V. What are the odds that that works? So we're going to play this code. 
Alright. It probably doesn't like all this assembly stuff, does it? This is probably illegal. Duplicate. Yeah. So I gotta I gotta exclude that somehow. Um, or just manually not copy it, which is fine too. But I want to be able to use this tool quickly, so I may just have to be a little careful about what I what I pull out. All right, let's try that. It's working. Okay, um, that's cool. So all right, so now let's go look at the code. Let's talk through what I, what I'm doing here. Um, so I have a couple of tests. Um, I have a recipe builder, which is my main thing that I want to do. And so the idea is that for a given uh, potion or a given order, I want to be able to produce a list of steps I would need to take to create that order. Uh, and the reason for that is because the steps are essentially the cost. The number of turns it takes for me to build one of these things um, is how much it costs. And, and if my strategy is to try and be as fast as possible or try and get the most points I can for a given amount of cost, um, whatever that whatever that strategy might be, uh, I need to be able to calculate that. So um, that that's the starting point. And so as an example, if I say I need a potion that takes three tier zero components and two tier three components, and I start, which the game starts you with uh, three tier zero, so I start with this, what would I need to do if I were just doing this myself? Well, I would cast two more of the tier zeros, and then I would upgrade one and upgrade one and upgrade one, and now I'm out of spells, so I'd have to rest. And then if I wanted to be ready for the next potion, I might do another cast, do the same thing, right? And then upgrade one, upgrade one, upgrade one. But this one is actually unnecessary and could slow me down. It could mean that my opponent might get to that brew before I do if I do that. Um, but, but if I don't do that and then I rest prematurely, right, then I'm kind of wasting a, a spell at that point. But then I would brew the thing, right? So that's kind of my, my logic. So I'm, I'm unit testing this with X unit and C sharp. I'm using um, fluent assertions, which means I'm going to have my assertions are going to look something like this, or I'll say dot should be of type whatever. I'm also using uh, a tool called Auto Fixture. So Auto Fixture you can find uh, on NuGet, and the way it works is it it kind of provides you with uh, uh, a builder pattern that you can use to create the the things you want to test. Um, and so in this case, I'm saying fixture.create inventory uh, to give me an inventory and give me a potion and, and then create a game state from those things. And this is sort of a, a trivial test, right? It just verifies that whatever I get back from this thing, it should be a recipe. Um, and then we get into more complicated tests and say, I want to return a recipe that where I have the necessary ingredients, it's going to tell me to just brew something. And so to do that, I'm going to say, give me some inventory. I'm going to build inventory with count zero of three uh, and create. So I've got three things that are delta zero. And then I'm going to say, okay, now give me a potion with some potion ID that's going to be important. Uh, and that it costs three of the of the tier zero components. And then create the game state, create the builder, uh, say build a recipe for that potion. And then the recipe has a bunch of steps to it. And I'm expecting that I only have one step and that step should be to brew the potion ID. And so that, that's what this is saying, and it works. So, so that simple, simple case of, you know, if I have the stuff I need, I, can, I will get the recipe that says to brew it, works, for at least for one thing. Um, then this one says, if I'm missing tier zero ingredients, that it's going to return a cast and then brew the recipe if I need those. So let's say I've got inventory is empty, everything is zeros. I have a potion that needs one tier zero component, uh, and I have these spells available. So this this is the only spell available is one that will produce two components, which is just like the real game. Then I create the game state, create the builder, call the thing, and I get some steps now. And I'm expecting the first step should be to cast the spell that gives me those components, and that one passes. So now I want to keep keep going down that path, right? So here's my recipe builder takes in the state of the game, says for a given potion, for a given set of inventory, and I'm not sure I need that because the game state actually has the inventory, so I may I may not need this as a parameter. Um, and, and something I haven't figured out yet is how I'm going to track the inventory in the recipe 
uh, that's separate from the real inventory of the game, right? So, so I have the game state, and that's like the initial state. But as I complete steps in the recipe, I need to keep track of the, the modified future state that the recipe would be in um, for those steps. And I don't have that anywhere yet. Um, so I probably need like a copy of the inventory or something, right? Yeah. And yeah, I'm used to talking we, a lot on my stream. You can't use, you can't use two. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You can't use the same one because otherwise you're, you'll mutate the actual inventory. And... Exactly. Exactly. So, so my simple, simple case here was just checking for count zero. If, if I don't have, if I have a shortfall of count zero, um, then I'm going to create uh, a step that says, get me tier zero stuff. And so I pulled that into a different method because I don't want to tightly couple this to a particular spell here. So this separate method for get tier zero basically says, go look at all the spells and find me the first one that will give me Delta zero stuff. Um, and, and that might have to get smarter later. Um, but it's like, I'm, I'm saying I'm broadcasting, Hey, I need tier zero things. Uh, and so this method is the way that I, I satisfy that need. Uh, and this, this right now it's a private method on here, but I can imagine that being uh, a separate class itself that, that gets pushed in there. Uh, thank you for the follow people. Um, Kingston Dev, Lakshan Official. Uh, so one thing you should keep in mind, dot, dot, dot. I don't, I don't see what he's saying there yet. Uh, thanks to the follow Anxious Android. What version of C Sharp does it use? .NET Standard? I'm using .NET 5 uh, for this. So this is actually a, a, really this library. This is using .NET 5.0, so latest version of, of C Sharp. I haven't tried any of the new language features uh, on Coding Game, but, it, but it's certainly working with this, with this assembly so far. Uh, did the folder structure mess with the compacting? Uh, changing this, it didn't, uh, that I can tell. Now, there should be a way for me to uh, eliminate all that assembly stuff, and I just don't know what that is um, yet, so I'll figure that out. Uh, thanks for the follow. Uh, in the future, you have spells that can be cast more than once, which might mess with your simulation approach. That is true. Um, when I say here, find me the first uh, spell that I need, um, this also, this isn't smart enough now to know if that spell is castable. Um, and if it's, if it's something that we can, uh, how do I ban somebody? You're right, that is a, annoying. Uh, hmm. You, ban, boom. That was easy, okay. Thanks, Joe. Um, all right, so yeah, so I do need to update this, and I don't have a test for that case yet, but I do need to update this that it would only look for the first spell that was castable, um, or it would maybe tell me that I need to rest before I can do it. Uh, and I think the, the object model, if we go look at the, the code here again in the game, I think the object model makes a distinction between castable and repeatable, right? Uh, way down here, so uh, repeatable, yeah. So there, there's an option of castable and repeatable. I haven't gotten to repeatable, so, so I don't have to worry about that yet, but I will need to address that somehow. Okay, so for me to be able to cast, like say this spell, I need to be able to produce uh, enough orange elements to be able to, to do that. Um, and so to get a recipe for that, it's basically going to be uh, cast up to an orange and then rest, and then cast up to an orange and then rest, and, and repeat that four times. And if I need more tier zero components, you know, produce those as well. Those are not mutually exclusive. Are you saying something might be castable and repeatable? I don't know what that means. Is that where... Is that what this means? Uh, cast at n times? Is that what that means? I thought repeatable just meant that I could keep casting it without having to rest. Well, I haven't gotten to those rules yet, so I'll have to address them when I get there. Well, that's part of the fun of these games, is they throw you these, these twists. Right, castable means not exhausted. Okay. And that's, and yeah, and then I rest to, to fix that. All right. So I think I've got Visual Studio working. I think I've got the copying working. Not perfectly. I've got to exclude some stuff, but, but it's not terrible. Um, I want to follow this recipe logic to get it to where it actually works. Um, and so that's my approach that I'm taking at the moment. So um, let's talk about shortfall for a second, because that's important here. The way this recipe builder works is it says, look for a shortfall between the potion and what I have. And so this gives me a delta of the inventory. And this, this inventory needs to be separate from the actual game inventory. We already discussed that. 
Um, and so I need a way to copy that inventory and then track that independently for this recipe. Um, and so probably I need some, some way to copy just to make sure I don't have a reference to the actual game state one and mutate that. Um, and then build this recipe uh, for that one thing. So when recipe builder is created, I could create it for a particular thing and create a new instance every time uh, if, if I take everything in through its constructor. And then I won't have to worry about uh, keeping multiple different inventory variables between things. So maybe we refactor that first. Um, and instead of saying build recipe for, uh, well, the potion could still come in, but the inventory shouldn't. So I don't need this inventory. But I do need a private version of the inventory. So private inventory uh, recipe inventory, let's call it, uh, is here. And that's going to be a copy of game state's inventory. So recipe inventory equals uh, underscore game state dot inventory dot uh, copy or whatever that I need to create. Um, so we'll just create a copy method and we'll go create that. Uh, and then this recipe inventory needs to be used here. And that's about it. Uh, and I need a copy method. So we're going to go create that method inventory copy because C-sharp doesn't give us one of those, really. Uh, so I'm just going to come here and we're going to say return new inventory with count zero, count one, count two, count three. So that's how I get a new instance of that. All right, now with that in place, if I turn on live unit testing, uh, which I guess is still running, let's just restart it, start. Then if we look at the tests over here for recipe builder, uh, they're all still green, so that's good. That's the wrong one. Okay. Phil, does that sound good to you? You're eating. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> uh, Simon, I'm loving uh, this. It would be easier if it's a record. Uh, I haven't used record types yet. You're talking about for inventory, right? Um, let's see if this works with record types. So record types, you know, Google the syntax real quick are part of .NET 5 and C-sharp 9, and they look kind of like this. And if we jump down to records, you would just say public record person, or in this case, inventory. Um, and maybe you get a free clone, he's saying. I'm not sure. Is that what you get with a deconstructor from it? <clears throat> um, maybe? Let's see. Init only setters, pattern matching, performance. I don't see anything there that's telling me how to create one from another one. You got equality, record support copy construction. Must include inheritance, properties added by developers. Yeah, how do you copy it? Person equals new person. That's just talking about inheritance. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't see where it gives you copy with keyword. All right. So, yeah, I, I recall that now. Uh, where is that? With, with, with. Okay, so here you can say brother, person, whatever equals this other person. And then I could skip the width, right? And if I don't use the width, it gets me a new instance of it, perhaps? Uh, let's see. So let's go write some tests for our existing code and then see if we can convert it to use a record. So we're going to say to do, make this a record. And right now we're just going to practice copying inventory. So we'll come down here, we'll say inventory copy as a new test. Um, and put that in its own file. And what do we expect this to do? We just want it to give us a new instance. Right, so inventory copy public method, not method, public void uh, creates 
separate instance with the same properties. All right? And so we can say var uh, inventory source equals new inventory. One, two, three, four. And then we can say var copy inventory equals inventory source dot copy. Right? And we say copy inventory dot uh, count zero. Well, we already get it. No, we don't get it quite in overriding quality. Uh, so I do have to check each one. So dot count zero dot should be uh, inventory source dot count zero. Right? And if live unit testing is still working, that would be running. If I told it it was a test. That. And I told it it was an X unit attribute like that. Is it still working? This is excluded from. Why is it excluded from? I have to manually add it. Uh, include. There we go. Now it's included. And wait for it. It's still excluded. All right. Let's just run the test. No overload for, okay, fine. Uh, let's go fix those. So my old tests all pass inventory in. This is one of those reasons why you want to avoid duplication in your tests. Like I really shouldn't have every test calling this method if I'm going to change this method ever, because uh, now I got to touch every test. So that if that were a helper method doing that, I would only have to change it in one place. All right, so now that that works. Uh, inventory copy works because the build passed. All right, that's good. This is not a great test, so let's make it a little better. And we're going to add count one, two, three. Should equal uh, one, two, and three. And then how do I check uh, with Fluent Assertions that it's a different instance? Um, copy inventory that should be different instance. Should not be same instance. Not be same as. I mean that's it. Not be same as uh, inventory source. That's what I want. All right? Maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. It was asserts an object reference refers to a different object rather than another object reference refers to. Okay. And that works. So good. So our original copy works as we expect. Awesome. Now let's try this record type thing. So if we come back up to inventory, we say this is a public record. Uh, yeah, public record inventory. Now it's a record. What else do I need to do? Uh, it failed. Uh, only records may inherit from records. I've got something else. Oh, shortfall inherited from it. All right, so shortfall also should be a record. I'm thinking. All right, build that again. And inventory copy, let's just create one of these. And instead of using dot copy, uh, create separate instance with same properties using record syntax. Uh, so this copy now is var whatever equals the other thing. And that should automatically create a different instance if I don't do with. So this equals that without that. No with. And it all fails. Uh, but why? Did it fail just because of that one? Right. So it assigned it with that. So now I can say with what? I don't want it to be different. Uh, with count zero equal count zero. Do I have to do that? That doesn't exist. Uh, okay, so that worked, and now I don't have to implement copy, right? So that's cool, but how do I do a copy like this without having to do that with? Just the thing, okay? Simon says, do that. Sweet. Okay. 
this still seems extraneous. Like, there ought to be a way to do it without that, but okay. Um, so that's cool. So now I can get rid of copy, all right? So that's gone. And inventory copy. We'll keep the record one just because it shows how to do that, which is good. Inventory copy. Uh, call it record copy. And that. All right. Tests are all green. I think they clone by default. All right. Assume fluent assertion quality. Okay. Okay, now the question is, I think Coding Game will not support record from Netfile. Yeah, so Shady's saying Coding Game probably doesn't support this. So that's the next step before I totally delete all my code. Uh, let's make sure this thing still works. So let's go over here. We'll run this. It generates this block of code here, uh, from which I'm just going to steal my stuff down here. All right, copy all that. We'll go back to Coding Game, finally. Uh, so, um, this one, yeah. I'm just doing a quick search on the on the record, and uh, it looks like that's the way to do it. There's no other way than with empty brackets. Mm. Um, there's also another thing to keep in mind with records is that they seem to be doing only a shallow copy. Right. So that's something to keep in mind if you uh, end up mutating stuff, you know, deeper down uh, the 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 object tree, I guess. Right. And this would all be cool, except that records aren't a thing in Coding Game. Oh, right. Uh, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Let me check what the version of uh, what version of C Sharp they're using. I think you're going to get to bronze today. Yeah, I should be able to get to, well, I don't know. What's after wood? Bronze is after wood, right? Yeah. All I, all I have to do That's... is beat this bot. So it should be pretty quick once I get the, you know, once I stop playing around with C Sharp features that don't work in Coding Game. Um, <laughs> we, should go, we should go pretty quick. All right, so I'm going to undo some changes here and bring that back. I'll just comment this out and make a note. Record types not supported. Coding game. But, yeah, they're cool. All right, so we go back to inventory and Control-Z that back. Get rid of this. Uh... And I probably just want to change my version of C Sharp to be C Sharp 8. Yeah. That. So, so they're running C Sharp 8.NET Core 3.1.3 compiled with uh, the unsafe flag. All right. Uh, let's see. In the browser. That'll work. Right. CSProd set C Sharp version. There's a way to do it in the GUI, I think, right? Um, I never, I never use this anymore. But I could do. I usually use that. VS Code even for my C sharp yeah. stuff, so I end up doing in the CS Barrage. Right, isn't it? Shouldn't it be here? Framework. Where's the version? All right. Well, C sharp language version, CS Proj Lang version, Lang version 8.0. I think is what I want. You said they're using 8.0, right? Yeah, 8.0, <clears throat> and uh, the actual version is 3.1.3. Okay, well, I'm going to assume 8.0 is good enough. Um, but if I say lang version 8.0, it should find that record on here. Well, it found a lot of stuff, didn't it? Uh, let's see. Yeah, that record type's no longer a thing. Now everything's good. Perfect. Okay, so we're back. Uh, inventory can still make copies. Recipe builder gets a copy of its inventory that it's going to mess with. We're all good. Let's uh, let's commit this stuff. Um, work into separate files. Working on recipe builder steps. All right, commit all the things. Push those up. All right. How do you check which version of language Coding Game runs? Do you want to paste that in, Phil? Yep. Find yeah, I'll do that. Okay, thanks. It's just an FAQ. You. Uh, there's the link. I don't know how to make you a better user in uh, in my Twitch stream. From I don't think I can do it from chatty. I have to do it from Twitch. But I was gonna make you like a moderator or something. 
So I could see the messages um, faster? Something. I don't know. So you can do stuff. Uh, <laughs> like, like sometimes, some places you can't post a URL. I was afraid it was going to block you from posting a URL. Um, but I don't think I have that turned on. Uh, and then if you were a mod, you'd be able to post URLs. But hey, it lets you post a URL, so it's all good. So it's C17. There you go. That's the version. Uh, according to uh, Jalvator 0606. Okay, so um, we want to create a test that verifies that this is goofed up and that I can't do this if that spell is not castable because I need to rest. I think that's my next test that I want. So when I go to, uh, and maybe this should even be a separate public method because um, I don't want to have to test it through something else. Um, think about that. We'll, we'll do it through something else for now. So we're going to take this whole thing. And what should this do if that test, if that spell is not, uh, and this is getting long, but here's my whole state, right? Blah, 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 returns a rest, then cast, then brew, blah, 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 given missing tier zero ingredients and uncastable spell. All right, that's a lot of information to try and put into a name, but... Um, this spell has these features and with s equal s dot castable false, which is probably what it defaulted to. I don't know, or it's random, um, but I wasn't paying any attention to it at all before. Uh, and so this is failing now. Is it failing here? I'm not sure. Thanks for the follow, Geeky Girl Sarah. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so. Why are we failing? I haven't changed anything yet. It still should be casting that spell, even if that's not there. Right? So when I get rid of that, everything's green. When I make that castable false, it fails. So I must have something that was looking at that. Um, so in here, we say, go find me all my spells. I have a, a recipe here that needs to get a tier 0. So in tier 0, we say, go find me the first spell where this is greater than zero, it should work. Game state, spells, and in casting. It was odd that that's not working. Let's see what's happening here. So I'm going to put a breakpoint on that. I hate having to debug into my test. It means I don't understand what my code is doing. Um, I'm going to debug into here. It's, it's nice that you can debug, though, when you're working right in the, uh, in the browser's ID. It's right. not an option. Here's my problem, right? It's the setup. It's not the actual test uh, behavior is failing. It's that I can't even set this thing up because castable is read-only. So that just saved me some time going down a rabbit hole looking for the wrong thing. When really, I just need to go to spell here. And this boolean castable will just give it a setter. Because the way auto fixture works, it's going to set that. All right, now it should be able to set that to false. All right? It's not read-only anymore. Uh, test one, green, set. That's all green. Let's run this test. Still failing. All right. I guess I got to debug it again. So I'll put the breakpoint right there. Oh, now it's green. All right. Live unit testing got screwed up. Live unit testing is hit or miss on Visual Studio. Um, it gets it gets weird. So debug says it's green. We'll debug it this time. Like these things are from live unit testing. When I'm actually running it, it's not live unit testing. So I can get to here. I can step over this. And now I've got a spell. And if we look at that spell, it's right here. And it's got a castable false and a delta of two and some ID that it gave it. So that's that's all fine. So I think it works. Um, I'm going to just turn off live unit testing because it's annoying me. So let's get rid of that. And let's just keep our regular test results. So we'll stop this. Um, but it's an invalid uh, thing, step, for me to pull in that, that spell that's not castable, right? So when I try and select a tier zero spell, it should either, it should, what should it do? How's this going to work? Um, 
Like there is a spell that it needs, but it's not castable. So it should instead return a rest, right? Yep. Um, so give me the spell, and then if two zero spell uh, dot castable, stop helping. Uh, all right, dot castable, then return this. Otherwise, return rest. And do I have a rest step as a thing? I thought I did. Return new rest step. Okay, so then when it rests, that should change the thing over. And so if we go look at this test, uh, its assertion is that it should return a rest first. So this should just be rest. And Kramer would probably be complaining that even when we do coding game stuff, we're stuck with rest. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. watching Kramer. Nick, Hi. Why not check all references to castable? I think auto fixture has a constructor setting. Why not check all references to castable? Uh, I'm not sure what he's asking there. I don't think I need that anymore. I think I moved past that. Live unit testing has not yet solved a bunch of issues. Code rush test runner used to have where it fails to reload the recompiled assembly. I found a command window extensions for VS and .NET watch test more reliable. I agree. When when stuff is wonky in Visual Studio, I, the first thing I do is drop to the command line and do .NET whatever, .NET build, .NET test. Um, this looks like it failed. Let's, let's run all these tests. That's live unit testing. Get rid of that. Um, let's find Test Explorer and run all the tests. Okay, so Recipe Builder returns a rest says expected to be a cast step but found a rest step. Oh, I know what happened. I didn't fix my test enough. So there's this step right there should have been a rest step. And that's really enough. I don't really need to test that it says rest because that's all a rest step ever does. So that should be good enough. And we can run this test again. And I do need to refactor and clean up my tests. They're, they're a little out of control. All right. This one now is expected type to be cast step but found rest step. The problem with this one is that I didn't set its spell to be castable at all here. So it's defaulting to false. So I just need to say for this one with s.castable true, and it should magically start to work. And we should be all green again. OK, good. Now, building a recipe is only working so far to give me one thing. Uh, it doesn't track the next step and the next step. It needs to build sort of recursively, right? So this there's this while loop that I've got that says while my shortfall uh, total is less than zero, that means I don't have enough components, I want to keep doing these steps. And so I'm going to add another step and add another step um, to keep getting tier zero components, and that is going to let me rest in between each one now, uh, and that's good. So I think that works. But it'll never get me a tier one component, which is what we need next, right? Uh, fixture constructor builder was so that you don't have to put a public setter on cast. Yeah, I could do that if I wanted to. I'm okay with those being public for, for now. If it were real business code and a domain model, I would probably not be as happy with that. Um, and I was trying to play around with auto fixture while, while we're talking about this. Uh, here, this stuff was not working for me. Like, I was trying to get auto fixture to not set auto properties um, because, like, I wanted these to just be zero. And I shouldn't have to add four lines of code for those to be zero. I should just be able to say, hey, auto fixture, don't set these things. Um, and I couldn't get it to work. So I was messing with that yesterday. Uh, and I don't know why. So I, I'm explicitly setting them all to zero, and that works. Um, but they ought to default to zero. And if I tell auto fixture to leave them alone, it ought to leave them alone. But check this out. If I, like, inventory, if I undo this and then we break point right here and debug this test inventory up here I said told auto fixture don't don't do anything with inventory right but now we look at inventory and it says oh you've got 173 of this component and 13 of that one and 114 of that one like that's what auto fixture is supposed to do but I I told that I told it not to I turned it off uh, and, and I, for whatever reason I'm not doing that right like I'm sure it's I'm sure it's somewhere in my fault, but everything I've Googled is saying that turning off omit auto properties, this right here, 
for a given type, that's supposed to be what that does, and I don't know why it's not working. So, okay, so let's write a test for a step two component. Um, and we'll, we'll refactor these to be smaller in a moment. But returns a cast, then brew given missing tier one. Let's do the same thing when I'm missing a tier two. So here's that whole big ugly mess. Come down here and add this test. Returns a cast, then brew recipe given missing tier one ingredient. So I've got inventory of nothing. Um, I've got a, a potion. Let's see. I should probably make a helper for, for these to shrink them down. Um, at which point, I don't even know that I need auto fixture. I'm going to bother writing helpers for it. Uh, this guy is going to say I need a tier one component. Uh, I've got a spell that gives me delta zero. I need another spell. Um, so let's create another spell. I need a spell that takes away a tier one component and gives me a delta one. And this is spell two. Uh, Okay, now the first step that I expect is going to be to cast that spell, uh, but which one? Um, if I started with nothing, it will have to cast this one first. That's, that's more complicated. Um, let's just say I started with one of these already, and in that case I don't even need two spells. We can simplify it and say I only have that one spell. We'll get rid of spell two, even though I just created it. Uh, of that. All right, so now we have the ingredients necessary to produce a, a, a tier one thing if we cast a spell. Uh, so that's what it should do, right? And if we build this, it should build. It does. And if we run this, it should fail. You're discarding your customization. Why am I discarding my customization? You don't replace the fixture with your customized instance. All right, let me check that, Nick. Um, all right, so my test ran. It didn't show me the result, though. Do I have an infinite? Oh, I have an infinite loop. That's why. All right, recipe builder. Uh, what should you do if you can't build a recipe ever? Because you don't have any way, right? There's a while loop here that I'm, that I'm hitting. Mm. Um, hmm. That's obviously not good. I need to make sure that never happens. So... If uh, your tier one shortfall count is not zero, then get tier one. I don't have get tier one, but let's just copy this. And let's do a get tier one. Tier one spell is find something with a delta one that's greater than zero. And then if it's castable, we're going to cast it. This is a tier one spell. I should just give that a better name. Um, but the other thing is, it's not just if it's castable, it's also if I have its ingredients. And if it needs a tier zero, then I'm going to have to call get tier zero here. So if it's castable, hmm. so, the, so my question I'm wondering right now is, do I check to see if it has the ingredients it needs before or after I check if it's castable? I think I should check ingredients first and try and cast a tier zero spell. And I don't really need that for this test though, so maybe we should just ignore that for now. Um, let's just assume we have what we need and we just run this and we see if that works. All right, so that at least gets us out of the infinite loop. Maybe it gets our test to passing. Uh, meanwhile, Nick is saying I can fix my customization of auto fixture because I'm doing the wrong thing. So I create this new auto fixture here and then I customize my fixture here, and you're saying I'm discarding my fixture. I'm discarding my customization. You don't replace the fixture with your customized instance. Isn't that what customize does? Like, what do you mean? This I only have one instance. It's that one, and I'm customized. Does this return a fixture? Do I have to say fixture equal? Fixture, it's a void. Resulting is added to. I don't. I don't see. How I would do that? What do you mean I, uh, I'm i discarding my customization? I'm not seeing it. Okay, so keep helping me out, Nick. Uh, I appreciate it, but I, I don't see where I can do what you're suggesting. Uh, for my latest test, way the heck down here, uh, let's run this. 
and see what it does. I gotta stop the current test run somehow. Test Explorer, stop. Try that again. I figured that infinite loop would time out at some point, but it never did. Okay, so sequence contains zero elements. When I tried to get the first of something, recipe steps first. So my recipe has no elements. Um, that's not good. So when I build the recipe for, we should come in here. We should say our shortfall. Let's see. Let's see what happens when we get here. Um, Breakpoint. That. And we'll run our test. Did you do anything like this, Phil? Are you trying to figure out the steps involved to create a thing? No, I decided to go uh, with the uh, tree search solution. So I'm basically building just a few basic functions to apply, you know, different like to to get all the valid actions you can uh, do and apply the actions to the state so that I can just basically generate like a list of everything that I can possibly do at any given step in the process and then just explore all of them. Okay. I see what I did wrong here. So at one point I had this, this pseudo code where I was just calling these methods and they were supposed to do whatever themselves, but then I changed right. it. They add the step here and I didn't do that to this one to make it match. So that's the problem with comments getting out of date. So there's my... Hmm. problem uh, and let's see if that fixes it cool all right so I'm able to do the right thing when I need a tier one thing basically if it's castable I try and cast it now that's not smart enough uh, because what should it do if if it's not castable I should rest all right we've already got a similar test up there I don't feel like adding that test right now because it's redundant um, but I do want to see how I can get it to figure out that it needs another component of a higher level, or lower level in this case. So let's say I don't have the thing I need. Return a cast, then... It's really two cast, right? Then cast, then brew. I'm not even testing that it does this chain. It's really just doing the one last thing. Uh, I suppose with the loop, it probably is doing more. I'm just not testing it. Um, okay, so I'm, I need this potion... So I need two spells. I need that spell and I need this spell here. And I should probably just give that spell a name. Um, let's do that now while we're thinking about it. So let's say we have a private spell get standard tier zero spell. Uh, and that is that. Make sure that build spell whatever. Uh, let's say we'll cast it. Uh, if it's true. And then this will just be castable. We'll default it to true. Uh, get standard tier zero spell. Means a return statement. Alright, and then this thing is just var spell equals. I want it to be false. Get standard. Change your spell false. That cleans that up a little bit. Um, and I want one of those down here now. And I want it to be castable. So do true. And then this is going to be a tier one spell. So uh, we'll do the same thing. Just copy standard two zero spell is now going to be a standard tier one spell. And that's going to be our minus one plus one, because that's what it is at this level of the game. Like that. And then this is a standard tier one spell. And castable true. Good. Like that. And... Down here, I want both of them. So, spell two is that. Uh, let's call this spell zero. 
and spell one, so that's more clear. Zero, one. And we expect the very first thing that we're going to have to cast is spell zero, which is to get me some tier zero elements. Um, and that might just work. So let's see if that runs currently. Got a good feeling. And it doesn't. <laughs> of course. <laughs> What's the problem? Line 161. Uh, expected cast 217, but actually cast 8. Um, okay, uh -huh. that's interesting. So what did we do? Uh, let's try running it again and just see if it's a random thing, which it shouldn't be. But auto fixture can sometimes cause weirdness. Right, it still fails. So let's go into build recipe and see what happened here. Okay, so I'm going to step into this and shortfall is uh, saying I need a tier one element. So we come in here, we're going to go into get tier one. Tier 1 is going to say I've got a Tier 1 spell, and it's castable, and just return that thing. Never mind that we can't actually cast it because we don't have the elements we need. So that's the thing we didn't add yet. So, okay. I was thinking I had done that, but that's right here. We have to say if we can afford to cast the Tier 1 spell, and how do I detect that? Uh, I need some way to check my inventory against that so my current inventory we had set to this recipe inventory so if recipe inventory um, dot I don't know I am um, I added a, um, a function that I think I called add which mm -hmm. basically it just together it, your inventory with the cost to see if it's yeah. zero Exactly. Yeah, I had something like that too, and I was doing it with potions to see if I could afford a potion. But you kind of need it with spells too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so inventory, um, it's, it's really what the shortfall was meant to be all about. So maybe I can use my shortfall type on that. So if there's a shortfall, this is specifically to a potion, but it could just be with any, uh, what did I call that thing? Any delta action, right? I I used um, I'm I'm basically using the same interface for all um, actions that um, so am I. In, involve those th those four ingredients. Right. So brewing uh, spells um, and the the actual inventory too. They're all the same interface. Right. So I've got this delta action that has that behavior. Uh, and so I just changed shortfall so it's not potion specific, it's delta action. And this could probably be an extension method instead of its own type. Um, for some reason I was thinking it made sense as a type. But this total shortfall tells me if I have what I need or not. Right? Um, I think. And so if I come into my recipe builder, and I create a new shortfall. So bar current shortfall equals new shortfall with current recipe inventory. And it's not a potion anymore, it's my spell. Tier one spell. Then I can say uh, if it's castable and shortfall is zero, then we'll cast it. If it's if current shortfall total is not zero. If current shortfall uh, dot total uh, is not equal to zero, then I need to do something. <clears throat> I didn't. I didn't see how you implemented it, but I saw something where you're adding all the you're adding all the different tier together. Yeah. Is that what? That's what shortfall's total does. Okay, uh, and your shortfall yeah, represents yeah, the that. difference between. Okay, gotcha. Okay. But what if... Um... So it doesn't care if I have more than enough of something. It only it only counts, you know, it sets it to zero if I've got more than enough. I got it. But if I don't have enough, then it counts that to Right. You're using math, man. Okay, cool. 
That was the idea. So yep. I don't know if I get very lucky or what, but my entire algorithm for casting spells is like 20 lines. And it always tries to have one of each ingredient. And then of all the ingredients, I need to craft the potion I'm targeting. That way all it does is just a for loop, gets the highest tier ingredient first and works its way down. Yeah, I could be overthinking this, to be fair. But but when it's done, man, it's totally going to beat your bot. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Okay, so so to, to get a tier one spell, if I don't have the stuff I need, it would be great if I could look at the shortfall and see which one I need and then build it. But right now I know the only one that's possibly I need is a tier zero. So if it's not equal to zero, then we're going to return new, uh, uh, what am I going to say? I'm going to say just get tier zero, right? So I need to get a tier zero right there. Do whatever that thing was going to do. Otherwise, if it's castable, do the thing. Otherwise, rest, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I get to tier two, it's going to be the same thing, right? I know with tier two, I only need tier one. Uh, and so this sort, sort of starts to repeat at this point because of just the nature of these spells at this level of the game. Um, yeah. So if I can get this to pass, I think the rest is going to go really fast. Um, so here's my test. Let's run this test again. Yeah, because they're all exactly the same. They're just basically a one-for-one -one switch. Um, okay. from you count how many blue tier. things you need. Isn't it better to count how many steps you need for an offer uh, instead of for an individual? <clears throat> yeah, the, rest, the recipe is all the steps for a given potion. For a given offer so so we'll see all right so this still failed um expected to cast this but got that all right why are you still failing um you're supposed to work now so let's uh let's jump into here debug and go in there and come in here and we say i have a shortfall total is less than zero I need some count one. I'm going to step in here. I'm going to say get tier one. We get a tier one spell. We get a shortfall. The current shortfall here says I'm short on a zero element. All right, so it's not zero. So we go into this. Sorry. Getting some text messages. Go into this and we say we're going to get tier zero. Okay, so tier zero is right here. We're going to find a tier zero spell, and we hope it's castable. Uh, if it's not, then we're going to rest, but I think it is. So, yeah, we're going to cast that spell ID. And we're gonna, I think my test is wrong. I think my test has got the wrong ID. So this ID is number... Oh, I lost it. Um, okay. Oh, ooh, ooh. Now we came back in here. Good. And we cast that. All right, so we added two steps. And we're done, right? Shortfall. But do we adjust shortfall? Shortfall total. Do I have to recalculate the shortfall? I think if shortfall is zero, then we're going to brew, which it probably is now. Right? I think I need to recalculate the shortfall after getting those steps, like right here. Um, but let's see what it does. So it's going to do that. It's going to return the recipe, but it never brewed anything. Um, so that's not good. So it needs to it needs to definitely do this this step. It needs to recalculate that. All right. So um, on our test, let's check this out. Spell zero is this one. That should be the first thing it did. So let's see what our recipe steps were. Um, Divide again, but just jump to the end. Get there, step over. Okay. Duh. Okay, so now steps. Only one step. Casting. Why is there only one step? I thought we saw it do two. Mm hmm. Casting spell ID 171, which is the wrong one, the last one. Um, so why didn't we get one? In Recipe Builder, we watched it do two, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, shoot. You know what? I know why. I know why. It didn't do it. Didn't do it. Um, here's why. Because when I said get tier zero, it didn't 
stop there. It kept running and, and didn't return until it got here. This needs to be return get tier zero. Mm. So that it returns this thing here. Because this returned to me, but it's not building up the stuff. All right, so that's now correct. And this shortfall needs to be recalculated, uh, I think, up to this point. So after I do all those steps in that while loop, then figure out the shortfall. And if it's not there, then through the thing. I think that's better. All right, so now let's try this one more time. Yay. Okay, let's try hey. all the tests. I could certainly still use more tests, but all the tests were good. All right, now we're going to just uh, stop test-driven development for a moment because we're giddy with excitement that we figured this out and there's a pattern here. So we're going to say, all right, for this one, control KU, this is this is how you get yourself into trouble, right? Yeah. With this overconfidence. Uh, we're going to say, get tier two. Tier two is going to look just like this one. Uh, and later on, we're going to want to, you know, refactor this to be better code. Uh, and then this should just be spell, I think. Rename. There we go. Do it. All right, good. That's better. That'll be easier to copy paste later. Find the thing that does delta two. Otherwise, get to one, and that's all good, right? What am I missing? Delta two. I have a shortfall. We're going to assume it's tier one. We're going to get tier one, and that should all be good. Okay, and then we're going to do the same for tier three. Take out that. Do this instead of that. Get tier three. And then get tier three is going to look a lot like this one. Good copy paste programming. Tier three needs delta three calls. Get tier two when it needs it. Build it. All good. Run the tests, including my non existent tests on the new code I just wrote. Nice. Fix recipe builder because it's been bugging me for hours. So it's spelled right. All right. And also here. Build successful. All right, now we go back to our other tool here, and do I still have it running somewhere? Yeah, here it is. It's running right here. We're going to regenerate it. Okay, and we said we don't need all that assembly crap. We want this generated thing down to the bottom. Back to coding game. Time for a drum roll. Uh, mm -hmm. Where is player? Player. Everything above player up to that generated line. Good. And let's see if anything turns red. Uh oh, I saw some red. Looks alright. Let's just try it. Play my code. Uh, do you count how many blue things you need? Right, no. You don't do anything to the line 68. All right, Nick, I don't remember what line 68 was. Okay, what am I going for? I don't see anything that needs what I'm building. Um, I'm still stuck in the same spot I was stuck before. That's not good. My opponent is building things. All right, so there's this soft lock again. Return get tier zero, but you fixed it already. Okay, good. All right, why am I getting stuck here? So I must be thinking that I want to. What am I casting? Attempted an invalid action. Not enough space in inventory for spell 78. So I never check my inventory in my code, which is biting me. But why am I trying to cast spell 78, which would be giving me more blue things? Ooh, I built something. Oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to build before, but at least we actually made a potion. Um, huh. I seem to only want to create tier three components. Yeah. I don't seem to want to stop at any of these easier ones. 
So I keep going up to that point, and then I just have to hope that it, somebody places an order for one of these. So why am I fixated on tier three components, I wonder? All right, still losing horribly. But I got some points on the board. That's something. Um, all right, I don't remember at this point how I'm choosing. Oh, you know what? I know what the problem is. Uh, we did all this cool work with the recipe builder and all that, but I didn't actually plug it into my game loop, right? We've been only <laughs> copy-pasting stuff up there. We haven't changed any of this. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, so how we actually pick our commands, hmm, that might be good to use uh, the recipe that we just created. Okay. Um, all right, so let's think about that. We've got this great object model. We've got a recipe builder. Uh, I need a way to use that. So my strategy was going to be build the recipe of the thing that took the fewest steps. Right, so for a given order, um, so for for an order, I want to calculate its recipe uh, dot steps. Right, so this would be something like in here, new recipe. I really want to spell it like receipt. Recipe builder that takes in. Um, here's my recipe builder. Here's this. Here's that. And we take in just the game state. Okay, do I have a game state yet at that point? I don't know if I do. Uh, I don't think I do. So, our game state equals new game state. Tell me what I need. Okay, IntelliSense is lacking. Inventory, list of potions, list of spells. All right. So inventory is inventory, lowercase, and then list of spells is spells and orders. List of potions, list of spells, so orders, spells. There we go. There's that. So recipe builder just takes in a game state. Dot steps. Dot create. Dot build recipe four. Uh, P, order by, uh, I guess it's an O, right? So orders, let's get this on its own line. Order by this, build recipe to, uh, for order, dot, steps, dot, count. So that's a long way of doing that. Uh, dot first or default. So what that should tell me is take these five orders, calculate their recipes, figure out how many steps they take, and then count them. Uh, and then whichever one has the fewest numbers should be the first one when I've ordered them by that. So mm -hmm. that's the one I want to do. So my strategy is go for the easiest one first. Uh, then grab that first step off that first order's recipe. Now I don't have the recipes though. So uh, instead of getting a list of orders, I really want to do a dot select on the recipe. Maybe I just create the recipes first. Um, let's, let's just create a list of recipes. So bar recipes, new list of recipes uh, for each bar order in orders uh, recipes recipes dot add. Uh, let's create a recipe. Uh, I need a new one each time, don't I? Um, recipe builder. Create a new recipe builder from the current game state. Recipes dot add builder dot build recipe for order. It's weird that it gives me that potion potion IntelliSense. That's that's mm. not correct syntax ever. Okay, so now I got a list of recipes. Chosen recipe uh, equals recipes dot order by r r dot steps dot count first default good 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 now I just need my command and that'll be the first step in the recipe so uh, r command equals chosen recipe dot steps dot first first or default um, is that a string? My list of steps, step first default, 
dot to command. All right? Let's, let's do this one more step. Our step equals step step first to default. All right? And we'll say if step equals null, then command equal rest. So we're going to give us a, a default. Um, what is command? I guess I get rid of it. Um, let's just say string command equals rest. And we'll start that as our default case. And then if step is not null, command equals step dot to command. I think was my syntax. All right, so now we've actually maybe possibly wired this thing up correctly. Um, to use the model that I just spent all that work creating. Let's see how close this is. Oh, I think it's... Nick suggests that we could avoid creating a recipe builder for every item in the order by, and you're probably right. I probably don't need that every time, because the game state won't be different. So I could probably move that builder up a line and make hmm. it much more efficient. But I was trying to remember that each one of those builders has its own internal state that it tracks. And I was worried that not resetting that between, I'm going to keep it the way it is just to be safe. I was worried that not resetting it between each one would be a problem. Right. Um, all right, what am I going for? I should be going for the cheapest one, which would be that 8.1 that just needs a bunch of green. And I'm going for, oh no, it should be the one that requires a few steps. And my witch is just confused. <laughs> what are you doing? Not enough ingredients to cast spell 81. 81 is the one that converts from a 2 to a 3. Um, which I don't have any orange. So I'm not able to do it. Alright. And I'm stuck just continuously doing it. Not enough ingredients for order 57. I need two and two. So there's 14.1 here. That's what I'm going for. And I can't create the thing. Hmm. You know why that's not working? And also, why am I trying to create it when I know I can't? Yeah, you're going to. Yeah, you might need to put a few. Uh, hey, Facetti. Console errors in there. Yeah, I think I might need to figure out what the heck it's doing. Uh, or write some better tests, either way. But uh, this this was not better, right? I, I produced zero uh, potions. Um, hmm. Maybe more logging. Yeah, everybody uh, has the same recommendation. Let's see. My chosen recipe and its steps, I could dump that out if I had a good two string on it, right? Yep. So let's go find a recipe. Recipe uh, says I'm going to try and do, for this potion, I want to do these steps. So let's just give it a dot two string override. So, I don't know if you knew this. You can also uh, write messages um, by just appending strings to the end of your command, I think. Oh, like whatever you put on the end of the command? Just the yeah, command. it'll actually so, print it on the screen itself, the play, the play screen. That can be useful sometimes and easier to look at than the, the, debug. the scrolling log, yeah. I have not tried that. I'm not sure what I would, like how that would be displayed. Um, all right, let's, let's try and just do a string format on, on this, essentially. And we're going to say uh, this is a... Well, you could, uh, kind of information you could um, poss possibly output is just like what you're, uh, what you're going for at the moment. Like, right. you know, casting the, the, and then the spell ID. Yeah, well, it, it shows me that, right? Yeah, in the scrolling log, like you have to, but you'd have it straight on the screen and it'd be... Easier to uh, 
Oh, you don't have to. It's just it's an option. Right, right. Okay, so I can do that as an easy thing uh, for a given recipe, and we can just see like what what that is telling us. Um, and then for a set of steps. So some points, some folks have pointed out that I'm not minding my inventory, which is totally true. That did not kill me this time, though, in this game. Right? In this game, I got stuck here. I had plenty of inventory, but I was trying to cast the wrong things, even though I didn't have the ingredients for them. So somewhere in my tests for the recipe builder, I've got a bug where I think I can create a, uh, a thing, but I don't have the necessary ingredients. Um, right. Like... Get tier zero always works. Doesn't need any ingredients. Does need to check an inventory. If inventory is too constrained, it shouldn't do it. Um, so that's the thing I should probably check. I'll just add a to-do here. Verify inventory is uh, sufficient. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, but then get tier one. Go find me a spell that will give me tier one things. Check and see if I have what I need to do it. If I don't, that means I have a shortfall. If I have a shortfall, I'm going to return get tier zero. And get tier zero should, if it's castable, return this. Otherwise, tell me to rest. And that should mm -hmm. work, right? Uh, then if this one is castable, it should do its thing. Otherwise, rest. I'm sure I can be more efficient with when I rest, probably, with a later optimization. But that should also work. Um, and just to make this consistent, we'll do this, rename that, that looks good. Okay, so then we said when I need to get tier 2 is when I have a shortfall of count 2 items. So I need to go get tier 2 items. And tier 2 items should say, hey, go see which spell gives me tier 2 items. See if I have a shortfall. If I do, assume that it's tier one things that I need and go get a tier one thing and do this stuff, and which chains on up the line. Uh, otherwise, cast this spell. So that means if I didn't return here, then I must have what I need. My shortfall must be zero uh, for this spell. So I should be able to cast it. Um, but if it's not castable, I should rest. Um, but I don't ever check whether it's castable again. I never set castability up or down. That's the problem here, maybe. Right? This, uh, well, okay. In, in my recipe, I never, when I build the steps for the recipe, the castable is not muted, mutated. Right? So, so if it's right. out castable, it's going to be castable the whole time. No, that's Anything right. Anything I need to do more, more than once, uh, yeah. it, won't, it won't toggle. So... I need not just a local inventory, I need a local spell state, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Alright, so I need a spell state equals game state dot spells dot copy. What does copy to do? Image elements. That's, it is a list. Can I copy? No, I don't want to. That's still going to be in the same instances, I think. I'll create my own. So we'll copy... Uh, no, that's not a thing. This is just a list of spells. How do I copy this to new instances of those things? That's just a list? The yeah, game state sure that spells is just a list? Yeah. I want to make sure I get my own separate instances of each spell, though, in my own Can't, can't you do, like, a new list from and then game state, game state dot spells? I can, Something like that. but they'll both be pointing to the same one because they're reference this types, right? So they both have a Thank collection you. of pointers to the same spells. So if I change the oh spells are okay, yeah, oh, they're objects. Types. Gotcha. Yeah. I could change them to records, but that doesn't work yet. So um, I just need a spell that copies. So public spell copy something like that. Return new spell with uh, same ID, um, right? So ID, comma, uh, delta zero, delta one, delta two, delta three, and then whether or not it's castable should be the same as well, castable. So that gives me that. So mm -hmm. 
All right, so then I can say, with that having a copy now, I can go back to Recipe Builder. Spell state is the, the new list of spells. It's game state dot spells uh, dot select s s dot copy dot to list. And that should give me a new set of spells in that mm -hmm. state. Spell state is a list of spells. Private list of spell spell state. Yeah. All right. Then, anytime I say to cast a spell, uh, when I do a cast step, it needs to set that spell. Um, so can I do that? I can't do that in the cast step. Where would I do that? I guess I'd have to do it in this block instead of just returning it. I have to do work and return it. So if it's castable, then do two things here set it to be probably want to extract a function and this to, should, it should never be deal with it spell. this should be my spell this should be spell state so game state i shouldn't really use in the system at least not for spells right um so where where all am i using we find game state there's game state just there all right so that should be spell state What were you saying? Uh, yeah, I, you, you could probably have a, a function that deals with uh, casting spells that A, actually casts, well, the spell, and B, uh, switches the spell to um, castable false. Maybe not castable. Okay. Because yeah, you're, you're doing that all over the place, right? They're all the same. So I could do <laughs> private cast spell, uh, spell, spell. Like that, uh, but I wanted to return that, so it really needs to be cast cast spell. Let's see, this is a cast step. Uh, create cast step and mark uh, cast spell false. There, mm -hmm. horrible. But that's what it's doing. Um, and so we'll say spell dot castable equals false. Return new cast step spell dot id. Right, and then this becomes this spell. And then we we're gonna do the same rename here I did everywhere else. So they're consistent and. That's good. All right, so then if it's castable, return that step. Uh, that's going to be the same here. And, but yeah, and it should same spell. Yep, and here and here. Okay. I'm starting to feel like there should be a template method for this. Like these are, these are all the same template, right? Right. Template method pattern for sure right there. All right. So Nick is saying clone. List has a clone. Copy will do. Creating a new recipe builder wouldn't reset all that. Do we need that? Um, I don't know. Maybe not. I might be able to do it simpler without all that work. Um, that, I'm pretty sure this will work. So that's what I'm starting with. And then recipe.toString, I think I want to pull that out. So let me get my list here and regen wait 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 what did i forget uh didn't didn't you do like all your uh a bunch of changes straight in the uh, in the browser id yeah did you bring only in that player i'm not going to replace that okay that was all in player so, okay cool um so i think i'm okay i'm just taking this logic everything from generated to the bottom grab all that and then in my ide here I'm starting above player okay. uh, here. Last thing is step. I'm going all the way up to that same comment. I'm pasting that in. And that's good. So we get that line twice. So that's, that worked. And then I want to be able to spit out the recipe information too, just so we have some extra logging. Um, so 
So as we build up the list of recipes, recipe builder, recipes to add, um, let's do an intermittent step here. Recipe bar, recipe equals that. And then we're going to add the console error right line for that. Uh, it's really just the recipe that I want to spit out, I think. Okay. Then chosen recipe, uh, we could spit that out too. So we could say which recipe we're going for. And we'll just say here. Uh, going for potion recipe dot what's on the recipe um, is there an ID potion ID Is potion potion dot id recipe dot potion dot id right uh, except that's going to be chosen recipe hmm. chosen recipe alright why are you red does not contain a definition for potion yes it does except that's lowercase why would that be lowercase Craziness. Alright, I think we're there. Let's try it. Ooh. Exciting! Crashed, yeah, you crashed. Output unhandled exception null reference recipe dot two string line one thirty. All right, why is recipe dot two string not happening? Maybe kidding. recipe doesn't exist. <laughs> Could recipe be null? Or it has to be potion. Or or chosen recipe might have been null. That could be. But it said the two string on line one thirty. That's here. So mm -hmm. it's got to be the potion is empty. Null reference, yeah. So when I create a recipe with a recipe builder, I create a new recipe here, and then it takes in. A, I never set the, I never set the potion. Uh, that must be the problem. So then I return the recipe. Yeah. So okay. So we need to set the potion to be the thing. Um, so for this potion, we need to do this potion equals potion. I guess. All right read only of course uh, that's fine set that I'm going to transpose this over to here that's a setter obviously it was supposed to take a constructor with a potion in it um, but I didn't end up doing that so I'll fix that in a minute but let's see if this works I learned my lesson with coding game now I just go public for <laughs> with everything yeah <laughs> uh. I it's have all really these, weird. Uh, good habits that I use for business code of, of mm -hmm. trying to encapsulate things. And yeah, they, they don't do so hot here sometimes. Well, given the, the time constraints, that's, that's just, uh, and, and, and the size too. When you start using a lot of indirection and encapsulation and stuff like that, you, you run out of lines. Right, that's true. Okay, so I'm trying to cast spell 80, but I don't have the ingredients for spell 80. Uh, which it doesn't like. Is this thing even running? What's this thing doing? Let's go. Alright, now it's working. Now it's not. What are you doing? Dallas is trying. Not enough ingredients for spell 80. Oh. Dallas rested. I'm building something. That's almost a thing. It's almost this one. Uh, where's my output telling me what I'm trying to do? Attempted going for a potion 48. Going for potion 48. Okay, good. 48 
is that one. Okay, well, it looks good. It looks like I'm getting close to trying to build that one. So, but I keep trying. To you would have to... Um, 79. You'd have to make some blue ones right now. That's what you would have to do. Yeah. And I'm and not. You're not. Obviously. No. Um, like I'm never creating blue ones. I've still got the three I started with. I never create any blue ones. <laughs> that was the only thing you did before, and now you... <laughs> I think we found the problem. Uh, yeah. This uh, this guy's just making all kinds of crap. He's in creating orders. Uh, hey, Ed Charbonneau. Thanks for joining. Did you click play my code? Yeah, I did. Uh, what did, 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 did we, okay. I'm caught up on chat. All right, what did I just change here? It was that potion recipe thing. So let me go fix that. Now let's track down what's going on. For those of you just joining, I'm playing this uh, coding game game in C Sharp, and I'm creating a bot that tries to produce the, the spell components needed to be, create potions that are made out of these ingredients down here. So these green and blue and whatever colored uh, things. I start out with a few of them. I can take actions to give me new ones from, from other actions, um, and I have to play against some other bot. And so you can join this if you just go to codinggame.com and say start. Uh, and it gives you most of the code you need to get started. Uh, and it's really easy to get going. So I'm in the Wood League, Wood 1 League, which is like the second level. Uh, the first level, really all you have to do is be able to like say I want to brew this, this potion or that potion. When you get to the second level, then it's a little more complicated. You have to be able to get the ingredients you need to brew the correct potion. And that's, that's what we're working on. So we've got some... Uh, problem we ran into a second ago that I'm fixing right now by passing in the potion that I need for a recipe uh, here. I'm going to say potion equals potion, and that should do that just fine. And then I'm going to fix wherever it breaks here. Uh, recipe builder. I'm creating it twice. Yeah, I don't need that there anymore. I just need it here when I pass in the potion. That should be good. All right, so that builds. And then the problem that we're seeing right now in, in the live bot is that it's never creating these tier zero things. Um, and it should. It really should. So, When's the last time you ran your tests? Oh, it's been a while. Yeah, we, we did it. Did we break some things, maybe? Oh, that still work. Oh, okay. So the question is, why would it ever try and create something that it doesn't have the stuff for? Right? It's doing uh -huh. that a lot. And so my my shortfall logic maybe isn't working the way it should be, because it's trying to create things, uh, you know, like right here. Mm. This should verify whether or not it, it has the stuff it needs. And if it doesn't, uh, if the shortfall total is zero, then it should add a step to brew the thing. So only when the shortfall total is zero should that happen. And yet it's it keeps failing, right? It keeps doing it when clearly we don't have enough inventory for a thing. So we see what total does. Yeah, let's go look at shortfall total. So to create a shortfall, I compare uh, a delta thing. This used to be a potion, but now it's really any type of item uh, here. So whatever item, this could be a spell, this could be a potion, um, has a bunch of deltas on it. And I only care about the shortfall. I only care if I'm missing stuff, not if it's too much. So I just do a math.min. Uh, on that, so if the if the inventory, let's say let's say I have zero of this thing, and I add it, and this delta item is a uh, a potion that has a negative two on delta zero, then the min of negative two when that gets added together uh, and zero should be negative two, right? And we truck on down the line, these things all come out as zeros, let's say. So then I should have negative two plus zero, oh. plus, zero plus zero, right? Like these should what all be if... negative. They should all be a max of zero, right? Otherwise, negative. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, and so this total should be negative. I think. Uh, but it's not working. So I think the Maybe, bug yeah. could be shortfall, and I could add more more tests for shortfall to see that that's working right. Like you here's also only test. Console console log it. And we can just take a quick look to see if anything uh, yeah, shows up. Yeah, the rest of the builder a... could be dumping out more stuff. Can I console log from here, or do I have to? No, you can. 
Just console uh, error. I have the same. Dot, right, that's yep. right. All right, same so, thing, yep. Uh, I'm going to go steal that code. Was it console error right line? I never I remember. But yeah, we need to dump out more, more logic. Way, way, way down here, we have console error right line. Yeah. Okay, so in here, in recipe builder, when we say uh, right here that we think we can build it, um, I would like to see what my recipe inventory is and what that potion is, maybe. So paste this in here, console right line. Uh, we think we can make a potion.id. Um, but how do I how do I show the shortfall? Uh, given shortfall short. So Nick asks, what if count zero counters count one? That's um, why I maxed it at zero. I maxed it. That's zero. right. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do a shortfall dot two string. Uh, there. Right. And console needs that. Okay. And I don't need two string really, so I'll get rid of that. It knows that that's going to be a string. All right. So I always need to go to shortfall and give it a meaningful two string. Over. Uh, String return uh, what should this be? Count zero count one uh, I don't think divide sign is probably the best. Let's do colon. Commas would work too. But see, that's good enough. Okay, so now we're going to dump that out and see. I mean, that should really be clear that we have enough or we don't have enough at that point. Um, so let's go find our code here, regenerate it, take our generate line down to the bottom, copy that, go back to coding game, find our player right there, scroll up to that generate line and paste and if we're good let's try it all right so what are we doing here we are going for potion 73 um, casting spells I still am never casting those blue spells um, Attempted an invalid action, not enough ingredients for spell 79. So, do I talk about that output? That output's not there. So why am I going for... Where's my command selection? So, my chosen recipe is here. And so, so I'm going for potion 73, which should be the cheapest one, usually. This one. 73 needs one of each thing. I clearly don't have that. I don't know what I'm going for here. Um, yeah, my bot's just confused. Like, I think I'm going for potion 73. I need three of these yellow things that it really doesn't need. Hmm. Going for potion 73. That's the chosen recipe. The chosen recipe has some steps. The first step is whatever. Um, if that step's not null, then do it. Okay. So what do I do if I wanted to go for something with all of those things? Let's just write a test for that and see what that looks like. So that's an easy test, right? Four minus one. Um, let's go try that. So recipe builder, build recipe four, uh, four minus ones. Let's see what the heck this thing does. 
So returns, let's just say correct steps given missing ingredients. Alright, so my inventory is nothing. My potion is minus one, minus one. Actually, you start off with uh, three tier zero, I think, don't you? Yeah, you do. I suppose we could do that just to match what's what's in real yeah. life. Um, okay. Then I need some... Let's see. These are all going to be castable to start. Um, and I need two more. So a spell two and a spell three. This will be a two and a three. And this will be a spell two and a spell three. Okay, and then I just need to copy paste some helper methods that probably need to go somewhere else sometime. Why don't I go buy them? Hi there. Uh, so this is tier one, becomes tier two, requires nothing. One and one. Does that look right? And then this is a tier three spell. Requires no tier one, takes minus a tier two and adds a tier three. Alright. Alright, so we've got our base inventory of three tier zero. We've got a potion we want to build, it's those minus ones. We're going to say we've got four castable spells. There's our potion. There's our spells. There's our game state. Where's inventory? There's inventory. Here's our builder. Let's go see what that does. Now, the first thing we would expect this to do, probably, um, would be to say, let's see, I have, I have enough of the tier 1, tier 0 stuff. So it's going to see that I don't have enough of the tier 1 stuff. And it should cast a spell. It should cast a tier one spell, right? And so step one should be spell one dot id. I would think. So let's just see what that does. Run the test. And it is. Hey, ship it. It works. Uh, okay. Well, clearly, <laughs> it doesn't do the right thing for the next one and the next one after that. So let's look at the actual steps. Um, so if we just break point right there and debug this, we should be able to see what it did for steps. And they should be wrong. All right, so here's our recipe. Here's our steps that have one item in them. That's not good. Uh, one step. Why, why did we not have more steps? There's a while loop in there. It's supposed to be whiling. Uh, all right. Hmm. Obviously did something wrong there. All right, let's look at this while loop. So. While shortfall, uh, we don't recalculate shortfall in the loop. That's a problem. Let's take this and move it up a line. Oh, yeah. I meant to do that at some point. I just never got around to it. All right. I noticed here that shortfall wasn't being recalculated, and so I recalculated it above it, but it needs to be every time, in the well. right? Yeah. That's, that could be helpful. All right. Let's go back here, and let's debug this again. So we were never going to get very many steps. All right, now, where's it? Recipe steps. Steps count one. Hmm, that didn't help. Why not? Hmm. Um, well, I guess we're going to step into this guy next. Let's see what actually it did. All right, stop that. And one more time. Thanks for the follow, Bagarian. Appreciate it. All right, so here we're going to step into the heart of darkness and figure out what's going on here. So we're going to create a recipe for a potion. This is the potion of four minus ones. That's good. Uh, we're going to create a shortfall. Our shortfall says, hey, we're short three minus ones. That's correct. Uh, we're going to come in here. We're going to say, do I need a tier three? Yes, I need a tier three. So we're going to say, go get me a tier three. So we're going to come into that recipe. It's going to say, do I have a spell? Yes. Uh, maybe. What are you doing here? Get over there. All right. Got a spell. I have a shortfall for that spell. 
And the shortfall for the spell says I need a tier two, which is correct. And we're going to say, go get me a tier two. We'll step into that. And tier two is going to say, I have a spell for that. I have a shortfall. My shortfall says I need a tier one. That's all good. We say, go get me a tier one. We come into tier one. And tier one, that's not what it, no, that is what it should do. All right. So then here, tier one is going to say, I don't have a shortfall, right? I'm castable as as I am uh, because I already have the tier zero elements necessary for this. So it should create a cast, which it will do. And when it did that, it should have marked that spell, but it didn't change my inventory at all, did it? This when it creates that, it also needs to adjust the inventory. That's that's what's missing. Okay, I know I know it's oh. wrong. So when we do create cast step and mark castable false and adjust inventory, so it's really just and oh, yeah. adjust state is what we're doing. Yeah. And adjust state. I thought we had done that. No, we never did that. Um, okay, so I need to modify my current inventory, which is recipe inventory. Dot, I really just want to add it together. I want to add it to that spell. Dot, yep. uh, add spell. All right. Now that's not actually a thing that I can do. What is recipe inventory? That's what I was talking about. Yeah, that you, I you did that. I, I had to that. do. I had to do exactly yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I can copy it, but I also need an add. So public void add, and I can really add any delta action. But in this case, we'll just say it's a spell. Spell. I think I ended up uh, implementing two versions of it. One I called apply, the other one add. Add would return a new uh, object, uh, I guess an inventory in this case or whatever. What would and apply actually mutates the object. Sure, sure. So if it's void, I expect it to actually mutate the object, which is what I want in this case. Uh, so yeah. when I add this spell, I want to just say uh, count zero equal count zero plus spell dot uh, delta zero, right? And then do that several times. That's right. You prefer doing it that way instead of uh, plus equal? Uh, no, plus equal is probably better. Um, well, I don't know that one's better than the other. It's just... Both. We'll just I was sure. for that so... at that moment. Do that magic alt shift thing that Visual Studio supports. Um, yeah. Does VS Code do that out of the box? I don't know if it does. Yep. Does it? Nice. It does, yeah. Fine, Multi cursor. Um, okay, so now that we change the game state. Recipe builder needs to call that, which we did. This was uh, an adjust state. Recipe inventory, add the spell. All right, that should change things up. Um, let's go back to our test and let's try and debug it one more time. Debug. Since we weren't changing the state, I wonder why we weren't. Uh, Am I breaking out of the loop prematurely? Is that the problem? Like, why wasn't it an infinite loop? We still only have one step. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think I'm breaking out of the loop before I should. Somewhere. Do I have a break? I have all these break statements. Yeah, those shouldn't be there. Right? Right. Yeah. Loop prematurely. Those, those made sense in a different version of this algorithm that I had in mind at one point. But not anymore. All right, so now... We're definitely risking infinite loop territory, but if we did everything right, we should be okay. Step over. So, keep going. Right, let me get rid of this breakpoint and go back here and add this breakpoint and continue. So I was talking about infinite loop. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. This process memory. Like, watch the stack grow. Hmm. All right. Uh, that's not gonna work. So, let's see what we did now. Maybe I got rid of too many breaks. Um. 
All right, while well, shortfall, I'm calculating it again here. I'm adjusting the state. At some point, if I do enough of these steps, then it does the state every time. Oh. Uh... If shortfall count three. And you do want all of those steps to be. Yeah, okay. So you need to adjust the shortfall after every, every one of those steps. Right? Why? Because uh, let, let's say I what? hit this first one, it adds the thing. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, so what I was thinking with those breaks, I meant for them to be continues. Continues. That's what I was thinking, too. I think, yeah, I think that's what I wanted those so, to be. So it would re-enter the loop fresh after each action and, and shoot the same um, set, right? But you're still going to have the problem of not having the correct shortfall anymore. Well, that's why... Shit. That's, uh, that's down at the bottom and it won't hit because of the continue. All right. Yeah, um, that's right. So you still, have, you still need it in every, every step. I almost want to say new shortfall right here. At the, um, yeah, if you have it at the top of the while loop, you're fine. The very first when you enter the while loop, you update the shortfall. What if I took literally this here and put it here? New oh. loop as part of the loop. Sure. And I don't need that, and I don't need that. And there's no, well, do I need the instance of it? Can I do a var shortfall right in the loop? I don't think I can do that. Never done that. I don't think I can do that. Uh, curses. All right, because I do need that instance of it. All right, yeah. so you were saying do it in the first thing in the loop. The problem, then I will yeah. be in this loop even when I don't need it. But that's okay, because it'll still drop through all these. So, so that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, let's just take this. I don't like this structure, but let's do it here. This can just become a while true loop, really, at this point. And then I just have to break it. Oh, while oh, true, okay. calculate the shortfall, do the right thing for each one of these, um, and continue, otherwise break. Oh. Right. I was thinking you keep it to the way you had it before and just update the shortfall first thing when you uh, get into the while, uh, you enter the while loop. You just have the same line twice in a row, basically? Yeah. Okay. But work. whatever. Now, yeah. here, I don't have that shortfall anymore because it's out of scope. So I almost need another. This so is you really need it outside back. of like, it. This should never happen. Like, like that check, I'm just going to make that a true for now. We'll get rid of it. Uh, given shortfall. We think we can make this... Yeah, I don't have that shortfall there anymore. So if we are breaking... If we get here, that's where that line could go. Right? Mm. We think we can make this potion given this shortfall. Um, if true can go... It looks like that. Alright, so we're really obvious about the fact that this is an infinite loop. And we're hoping that we can break it through these steps, I think. Can put it in condition if the first try, then do not do it. Sure. Or in the free kind of need it. It's a local instance with scope in the while. Yeah, I ran into that, Nick. Thank you. Uh, isn't it easier to get the inventory and spell state from the game after every action instead of managing it yourself? Um, I am, I'm managing it myself because the steps of the recipe are changing the state that's the future state if I follow this recipe. I don't want to change the actual game state in the course of calculating out a recipe. So that's why I called it a recipe is because it's like a, a list of steps I could take. It's not a list of steps I have taken. Um, all right, let's see if my tests work, including that new one we made. And if it's infinite looping, then that's not good. Should look like it still is. Mm. A few of them, at least this one is. Alright, so all right, why would we infinite loop in here? Um, we calculate the shortfall. If we need any of these things, we go get them and 
if we rest, I don't I... reset the step. Whenever we do a rest step, I don't set the thing. That's the problem. So there's create cast step and adjust. That I need a similar one for rest that resets all the castables. That's the other piece that's missing in terms of um, emulating mm. this. So I need a private rest step, create rest step, and adjust state. And that doesn't need anything. Uh, it does need to return a new rest step, but it also needs to go through and say for each bar spell in, uh, what are my spells? Spell state, spell.castable is now true. Uh, now I need to say this instead of this. Alright, so anytime I need to rest, I'm going to reset castable on all my things. And that includes that one, and that includes that one, and that includes that one. And now if they're castable, they should actually get called, and that should kill my infinite loop if I'm really lucky. <laughs> Woohoo! That was hey. cool. Alright, uh, we might be close. So now let's go try this on the game. Uh, regenerate that. Copy from there. Back to my browser. Find the player. Right there. To there. Paste and play. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. I am doing stuff. But you're not building, you're not brewing any potions. We already know that, right? By looking at that little bar. What, here? Yeah. There's only a red mark. It means that the red witch brews at that point. Mm. Yeah, they'll never create in blues. Um, Adalus rested, Adalus attempted an invalid action, not enough gradients for spell 80. <clears throat> spell 80 is this one. So for some reason, when I try and create a tier 2 spell without tier 1 ingredients, it fails. And that's what I was doing before, so there must be a bug we're missing. Mm. Um, let's go back to the... Might have to flesh, flesh out your, uh, your test case so that it does the entire... Yeah. It's just eyeballing it. It looks good. But when it tries mm -hmm. to get a tier 2 spell, it looks for a delta 2 greater than 0. So when we need a tier 2 element, we try and find a spell delta 2, and we calculate the shortfall, and we try and do tier 1. Like that ought to work. Let's go back to this last recipe we were doing and see what steps we generate. Because we never did look at that where it actually had steps. True. Okay, so now our recipe. Ten steps. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay, that's better. That's progress. Uh, I need a way to... These are all cast. Cast, 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 rest. Cast, cast, rest. Cast, cast, brew. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Do I need to look any further? Like, it's casting whichever spell those are, but I don't know which ones those are. This value, I just need to be able to two-string that so I can see better information. But it, this looks right, right? Like, three casts to get me up the tier three item I need, and then rest. Two casts to get me the tier three, the tier two item I need, rest. I don't know, a cast to get the, the to turn a, the last blue into the, the next level up I need. And then get me more blue. All right, this should be spell like seventy three, and... which ought to be spell zero. Spell zero is seventy three. Yep. So then, and then brew it. So that looks right. <clears throat> uh, if we look in the um, in the game, just the first the first uh, few steps to see what uh, you're actually trying to do. Does that 
So the first time around, we're, we're... We think we can make a 56. There's the different steps. 14, 16, 13, 11 steps. Going for 52, the one with the fewest steps. That's good. Okay. Motion 52 is this one over here in the end. So it takes three of those, two of those. All right. So I cast spell 79 and use that up. And then... Huh. Right. We get the thing we need. We get the other thing we need. At some point we also jumped a... I don't know why we did that. Yeah. Hmm. Why would I have done that? Are we still going for the same potion, or did that change for some reason? Are we still going for 52? Yeah, okay. It knows that we're four steps away. Now we're five steps away. What? <laughs> but I don't feel that just lost a step. Yeah. It's two steps forward, one step back. All right, now we're four steps away. Yeah, uh, and we're stuck in some sort of uh, loop. Oh, no, we're still at four steps. I'm doing invalid actions. For spell, spell 79. 79, which is give me another green, which I don't even need. Oh! Uh, hmm, no, that's not right. I think I have an off by uh, one air somewhere. That's got to be what it is. Maybe. So if I do some more tests, I'll probably find it, of course. Um, so that's what they're for. This is yeah. totally correct, though. That's the part that gets me. Um, yep. So that's why I'm saying you should, you should just okay, so this is do the entire three, thing. Zero, zero, minus two. I want to see what that one does. Um, so let's do another one of these. Let's see what we got. All right, so this one is three zero zero minus three zero zero minus two. Return the missing ingredients. Two. Uh, let's go break point there and look at those steps. Over here, and we get nine steps. Uh, that sounds pretty reasonable. And um, what are the steps? They are cast, 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 rest, cast, 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 brew. Is that possible? Um, One, two. Well, yeah, you've got all four available after you've rest. You've rested. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking maybe one of your spells um, has the uh, an off by one. Error that could be your tier zero spell or tier one or tier two might have the wrong delta. Might yeah, have. I don't know. Oh no, those are for your tests, yeah, right? Test. That doesn't make Good, sense. Yeah, no. Got issues. Yeah. Um, let's see, a brew that just brews a potion. Cast, cast whatever spell I tell it to. Delta. Has zero one two three zero one two three. Those all line up. Aim state mm -hmm. all looks straightforward. Just copy paste. Inventory is a count zero one two three. Those all work. Count zero one two three when I copy. And mm -hmm. spell zero one two three delta zero one two three. That looks right. Potion. I don't think I use these costs anywhere, so I think those can probably go. They have zero references. So let's just ditch those. Um, and this is parameter D0, D1, D2, D3. So that all looks right. Mm -hmm. um, save that. Recipe is for a given potion. Get our steps, list our steps. That seems to be working. Recipe Builder is probably the biggest chance where we've got a problem, right? So we copy the inventory, we copy the spells, we build recipe for a potion, new it up for a potion, um, figure out the shortfall of our inventory with that potion. We've done checks on that, that seems right. Count three. If, it's, if I don't have enough of 
tier three components, I need to get tier three components. If I don't have two, I need to get two. One, I need to get one. Zero, I need to get zero. Those all seem right. Um, when we go to get tier zero, we don't care about inventory at the moment, but we find the first spell that'll give us delta zero. And if we can cast it, we do. And if we can't, we rest. Uh, these are kind of in the wrong spot here. Let me just move them up here. All right. So that's fine. This one, tier one looks for delta one. Tier two looks for delta two. Tier three looks for delta three. These all look fine. Um, tier two calls get tier one. Tier one calls get tier zero. Tier three calls get tier two. It's all fine. Everything else is the same. It's literally the same code. Mm -hmm. When we rest, we just say rest. Shortfall, we already looked at a couple times. That, and looking at our test output, that seems like that's working. Spell, uh, copy, D0, D1, D2, D3. That's all right. Over here, that's going to be the same. That's all good. Alright. Um, I'm not seeing it. If you, uh, if you go back to uh, the recipe builder a second. Yeah. Uh, the step where if you look in your while loop at the very bottom, what's happening there? Okay, so after we're out of the while loop. Okay, when I brew something, we never get this far in the game, but when I brew something, there's probably some modification to well, we do get that far in the game, don't we? I never we? brew anything. No, it doesn't work because you don't have the ingredients, but you try, don't you? Or we're stuck on trying to cast something that right you're not the ingredients for. Right now, I'm stuck on trying for. to cast things. I don't have the ingredients. Okay. Means okay. that it's like the shortfall stuff's not working, or the chaining isn't working. Right. What is the brew step? That just adds uh, a command that says to brew a potion. Honestly, we it might be worth it. It might be worth it to um, to work out work out the steps by hand and write a test case with uh, <laughs> that just verifies that we have all the right steps. And then it happens in the right order. That's kind of what these last two things yeah. are, right? Like that, we we didn't do it in that that order. We we did, uh, you know, given here we are, given that I have this inventory and I have this potion that mm -hmm. I need. Um, I expect the steps will be to do whatever, right? And I can I can sequence these, right? I can say mm -hmm. the first step should be this, and the second step, right? Yeah. Uh, I expect the first step to be cast spell one, yep. right? And then I expect the second one to be cast spell two, uh, et cetera. So I could say... Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, Go through the entire thing. <laughs> uh, take one, skip... Skip one dot first dot to command that should be this one. Except that should be spelled too. Right? We follow all that. Uh, let's see if I got that right. Yay. Okay. So when we do the third step, I'm going to skip two of them. I'm going to cast spell three. And spell three gets us that uh, first of those two things that we need. All right. And then mm -hmm. the next step should be rest. I think. Should be rest. Uh, at that point. Now, really, what it ought to be, if I were smart, is cast spell zero to get me you know, those extra components I'm going to need. But mm. we're not that smart. So let's run this. And it still passes. All right. So after we rest, then we're going to do the same thing again. One, two, three. And then we're going to realize we're out. we don't have enough of the zero, so we're going to do zero. And then we'll brew. Right? So mm -hmm. let's just copy that and that to there 
right? And this should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is one, two, three, then zero, I think. I don't need to rest. Then zero is what I expect. And this should be brew uh, potion.id. Alright, and that should be 8. Alright, okay, so let's see. What are the odds that that all works? And if it does. Okay. I'm looking at, this is what I'm looking at here. Oh. So this green check says hmm. it passed. Um, wow. Alright, so somehow it works. It works on my. Can we try the exact same. Uh, case that's in the that's in the game this was one of the ones from the game yeah oh it is so let's compare let's compare what you do then in in the game to make sure it's the exact same steps that um we've got see. i don't know if i can get back to the one that nope. was there before yeah yeah you can uh yeah, i know i can replay, replay the conditions in... this one but this one doesn't have the one that i had oh so what i was saying is let's let's do this one let's do the one that we would have in this case, so we can compare. Let me, yeah. let me copy my code one more time, just to make sure that that's in sync. So I'm gonna rebuild all this. Which shouldn't be necessary. We'll go over here, we'll regenerate all this. Make sure we're on the latest. Copy all the stuff. This is pretty handy. It's not. I mean, it's not as uh, as nice as not having to do this stuff, but it's not terrible. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're gonna start there all the way up to the top so there paste all that and we're going to start fresh make sure that this is good and then we're going to look and see whatever i'm going for i'll take that as my test case and if it's still and stupid mm. which it looks like it is because there's red doing the deliveries yeah you're not brewing you're not brewing anything i should yeah. be picking going for potion 50. potion 50 is this one so it's Minus two, zero, zero, minus two. All right. And so my steps, if we go all the way to the back. Doesn't it say it somewhere up here that I'm not seeing it? I didn't, I didn't say it. Um, all right. So my step is cast 79, which was that. Um, which I think is what we would have expected. And then transform that there yeah and then why did I do that one again I don't know why I would do 79 again I suppose uh yeah no that makes sense ooh ooh I think I found that might be a okay let's let's bring this into my code and see what happens all right so minus two zero zero minus two let's let's do that in a test case um all right so this big long test I'm gonna keep we'll start another one Ingredients three minus two zero zero minus two. That's very similar to what I've got. Um, the only difference ought to be that I don't need to do this. I will need to do that. Let's see. What's it gonna do? Well, let's just run it and see how it's different. Let me tell me you fail. You pass. How do you pass? Oh shit. All right. No. Recipe step, skip first, count That should be an assertion. How the heck is this passing? It's identical. I guess it could be identical. Because um, it was only off by this difference. Right? The mm -hmm. actual steps are the same. Okay, yeah. so so it expects that we're going to do uh, a spell one, then a spell two, then a spell three. But that's clearly not what it does in the game. So in the game, it nope. did spell one and a spell two and then another spell one right mm. and it must have rested in between i'm guessing right the only way i can get this green and that orange is if i've rested so it rested before it got this one up to a yellow so why why would we do that uh let's go back to looking at how i actually use the recipe maybe that's where it's broken um Where's the brew step? Go back to the standard tier spells. Why not just recipe that steps sub one? 
uh, can you look into the get standard spell? Standard spell. What's Nick uh, talking about? In here, uh, I think you're saying I could have simplified my my helpers for my tests. Is that what you're saying? As uh, get standard whatever spell here. Um, this this could have been one function. With, with some variables, certainly, if that's all you're saying. Joe, no, he didn't get it working yet. He's still working on it. Um, although I probably have to be done soon since it's getting late. Um, it's working great in my test. It's just not working in the game, which leads me to think that I must have something wrong here. All right? Because... Or something wrong in your test. <laughs> but it looks like my test is saying, yeah, do exactly these steps. And then the game doesn't do uh, that, right? So I've got the game state. I've got the recipes. I figure out which recipe I want for each thing. Build the recipe for that order. Uh, console right line recipe dot two string. I don't, I don't even see where that happens here. That's no. That's can. Can we compare the steps that we should be getting from the tests and what we're actually doing? And that could help us pinpoint, you know, the problem maybe? Yeah. I mean, we could say we're, this is my chosen recipe. Let's dump out the steps. Um, yeah. So there's, there's my... Yeah, and then, then we can easily compare. Uh, Command is that's just a string, right? To command that gives me a yeah, it's a string. Good. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to error, so that should be all right. The step is yep. being used multiple places. I'm declaring as you and closing local scope. Yeah, so I'm using that there also. Um, for each bar, stop. Okay, let's try that. Let's replay with same conditions. And. We should go for this one, number was well, previously number fifty, still number fifty. Okay. And our steps are So looking from the beginning just for Right. So our initial set of steps from the beginning. How do I get back to the beginning? I you guess can't. I have to do this. All right, so on very step one. Probably you can scroll. Yeah, you used to be able to scroll, That's but weird. now it's like snapshots for thing. Oh. Um, all right. Okay. So my my thought here is cast seventy nine, cast eighty. So seventy nine is here. Give me a green. Give me an eighty. Give me that. We're going for portion forty seven, which is this one. Okay, so we think we can make potion 47 in seven steps. Okay, so potion 47 here. That seems reasonable. All right, so we're going to go 7980, 7980. Um, that's this, 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 this. That sounds good. So let's jump ahead a little bit. There we are. We did that. But why do we create that other green one? Like right here, right here, my steps are rest 798081 50. So I don't know why I need an 81. Now I'm going for potion 50. So I changed at some point. Mm, so that's the thing. So as I made steps, uh, whichever one I was keeping. Somehow I took my eyes off the prize. So. Yeah. So maybe instead of uh, having this uh, 
uh, potion selection thing every time, save it to a variable. Your chosen potion, save it to a variable outside of the game loop. I thought about that, yeah. but I really want to go. I really want to change directions if one suddenly becomes easier. True, yes. For whatever reason, right? But you might want to make sure that yeah. <laughs> it right. works yeah. first. <laughs> um, so like 47 is seven steps. And 47 is four steps, right? Here's my four steps, this, 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 this. And I cast. And now, where is it? There's five. All right, five. Now 47 is eight steps. How the hell is that eight steps? Because that green one, I should be able to turn into an orange with one step. And now I should be able to get two more blues with another step, and I should be done. So this inventory, that's my opponent. My inventory is 111, right? And I have a spell that's that, and that, and that, and that. That all looks right. So what steps am I thinking that it needs? So... Recipe for 47 is eight steps, but when I actually print it out, it's those steps. Are it's we switched to 50? Uh, no. Switch here to 50. All right. So the question is, why did my recipe, when I have an inventory of 111, and I'm going for minus three, minus two, minus three zero, minus two, why did it switch to eight steps? Yeah, and with all spells being available too. Right. Yeah, I just rested. So there's a, uh, there's something wrong maybe with our resting, uh, the way we handle rest. Something. All right. So if I say I start with one one one, and I need minus three zero minus two, what do we get in a test? And it's the only way I know to simulate this. I don't think I need to test every one of those steps, so let's just do this one. It'll be similar. All right, so I'm starting with one, 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 and one, and one, and I need minus three, zero, minus two. So minus three, zero, minus two, and it's saying that's going to be eight steps, and I think that's crazy talk. So the <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. something else. Debug. What eight steps would you have to take? What would you do? Test run finished and everything got there. Build succeeded. Debug. Why did I not hit my breakpoint? There we go. All right. Uh, all right. So there's my recipe, and it says there's three steps. Do this, do mm. that, do the other. Okay, that sounds good. Um, why the heck is it eight steps in the game? Uh, do we ever get, like, where do you store your steps? They're recreated every time. They are? Yeah. Uh... Because it looked like they may, they may, you might be adding to recipes. Add recipes is a so new list. In, yeah. in this loop, on this turn, I get a list of recipes. And for every order, mm. I create a builder, create a recipe. Mm. I dump out that recipe uh, and add it to my list. And then I pick my chosen recipe and I say... Here's my steps. Hmm. If I replay on these same conditions, I could print out whatever recipe I need for 47 again. Yep. You don't count that all the previous steps you did. No, I'm not keeping track of how many steps I took. 
the recipe is just to, to get me from my current state to this this end state. That's the goal, mm. Nick. Um, you only get one step, so could it be that the next step changes due to corrupted state? It's wrong in the deltas there. You try and get the recipe builder out of the orders. Uh, out of here. So you're thinking this is somehow messing things up. Because if this build recipe thing, if I didn't successfully keep this from mutating game state, maybe that's the problem. And in a simple case, all by itself, it's not an issue. But when there's a bunch of things happening, it's getting itself confused somehow. That's possible. Mm. So let's look at recipe builder again with an eye toward making sure that we're not mucking with game state anywhere. Because game state should come in and basically be read only. And we should copy... In fact, I don't even need I don't even need game state to be a field. Right? I can just get rid of that, get rid of that, and these can just take that game state and take a copy of it for spell state, take the inventory and copy it in the recipe. And assuming that these are working, right, which is a big assumption, assuming that that's actually giving me my own separate copies of these things, which maybe they're not, maybe I've screwed that up, um, then then this should all work, right? Nothing down here touches the actual state of the game. So let's look at one more time at inventory copy. This says, give me a new inventory with four integers. That's that's going to be no references to the original. And mm -hmm. spell copy says, give me a new spell with a bunch of integers and a boolean. So there's no reference there either. So I have to think I'm doing that right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What? We're uh, we're mutating the that add function that we uh, we added, which actually mutate the state, right? Oh, yeah. Is that a problem? Do we need do we need the previous state of uh, inventory still somewhere else in the, in? Uh... Um, we only do this when we say we cast a spell, and once we cast a spell, we really do modify. The, the in-flight inventory inside the recipe builder, which is all this is using. Okay. Right? So it's only used right. by inside the recipe builder. Um, so I don't see why that would be a problem. And everything, like I said, everything works in my test, so it does definitely feel like there's some interaction in this span of code here that's not covered by my test that's wrong. Um, hmm. Which I guess one thing you could try is what I was suggesting and see if it'll work when just sticking with the same recipe. All right, so Nick is, is saying when it says eight steps, it's not in the starting point you have. That was a few minutes ago. Um, and that's correct. That should be telling me that there's four steps left at that point. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what were you saying, Phil? Um, that we could try just for the sake of, uh, you know, debugging. We could try saving the uh, chosen um, recipe. Keep it, keep it. Yeah, just to see if it'll work at least. All right. And then that that'll tell us that there's something wrong with. Uh, well, we'll get get us a little closer to uh, understanding what's going on. Um. All right, so chosen recipe is going to be whichever one is the goal, right? So order by first or default. Yeah, that's fine. You just do an if statement. You know, for the first time we save it, then next time it runs. If we already have a chosen recipe, then don't bother changing the chosen recipe. Yeah. Really? Pretty sure I give you a variable. Oh, current. There we go. Current goal. That's a bad name. Uh, current potion to build. How about that? Current potion to build. Let's do that. And I'll say if that equals zero, then uh, let's see. And we want to choose the recipe. I didn't really need an instance of a chosen recipe at some point, though. So, recipe 
chosen recipe here. And if that, then chosen recipe equals that. And current potion to build equals chosen recipe dot potion dot ID. Else uh, chosen recipe equals recipes first recipe r dot potion dot id equals chosen no current 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 potion to build there right that's what you're after uh no i was just gonna say so actually save the chosen recipe outside the y loop no, instead of the id yeah, yeah that might be. and then you just do an that's if fine. you know if Fine. Uh, let's do that instead. Recipe. Chosen recipe. There. Uh, equals null. Are you not happy? Okay. Recipe. Okay. If. Chosen recipe is null. And set it. <laughs> All right, that's simpler. Good. Uh, yep. Um, now, if we ever do a brew step, we need to set chosen recipe to null again, right? Theoretically, if we ever get that far. But yeah. For now, yeah. let's replay the. Uh, yeah, I was. I was going to say I wouldn't even bother with that right. yet. Let's just see if we can actually brew something. Yeah, that's right. And it looks like no. But we didn't change anything. Yeah, so, so. Um, so the problem is not with the fact that we're changing midway. That's what I wanted to determine. Yeah, so we can do 47 with four steps. Then we can do 47 with seven steps. Then we can do 47 with five steps. Then we can do 47 with four steps. Now seven steps. So why, why does it do that? And then eight steps. It should just be yep. doing the steps and going down, right? It should, yes. There's our eight steps, or seven, or whatever. So it looks like there's something wrong with the algorithm but all our tests are passing which is really weird yeah now i can do 47 with one step but here's our steps so we do have a test case right that uh, replicates exactly this this case that we've got on the screen right yeah. now so let's look at the actual steps uh, that were uh so at the very beginning if we look at the steps that it's printing out and if we compare that with our test case I'm wondering, are we are we getting the same thing? <laughs> All right, so step one, we think we can do 47 with seven steps, and here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, 79, which is that one, All right, followed by right. 80, which is that one, then rest, then... So let, let me write this down. Okay, so... So we've got, okay, so 79, that's tier one. Yeah, so it's going to do so tier one, then tier one, two. two rest, then one, two, zero, rest. rest. One, two, zero, rest. Okay. All right. So now let's look at what we've got on our, in our test case. And I'm curious and Lucifer to see. says you need to DQ steps if you store the reference. Reference to what? Uh, one of our commenters. And Nick says maybe save the steps and then just play them since we've got the recipe. You know, if we if we have a recipe, you just play the next step uh, instead of recalculating it every time, which would make sense. Um, sure, but that doesn't change the fact that I don't know why it's it, recalculating it, would... it wrong. But if it is if it is yeah, calculating exactly. it correctly the first time, we could just grab the next step, grab the next step. True. Okay, so your idea. The question is, is it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the problem seems to be that it works for the initial case and it builds the initial set of steps correctly, but then when it recalculates it with a different starting point, somewhere there's a bug, right? Okay. So, let's so go we look could at we could uh, where it starts to fall apart. So yeah. 
uh, let's just jump in about seven steps. Okay, seven steps now. We should already be done. And it's still trying to build 47 now with seven steps. And it thinks those seven steps are blah, blah, blah. Uh, same, basically the same ones it had before. Uh, nope. So difference. I had one, two, rest, one, two, zero, rest. Is that what we've got? No, we've got... And now it, it's trying uh, to cast uh, 79 when 79 is not even available because he hasn't group. rested. Okay. So, it, like, 79, at this point, 79 is, is not castable, but it still tries to cast it. Hmm. So in, a, in an initial state, let's, let's track this initial state. So initial state is 2-1 uh, is what we've got, and the rest are zeros. Um, and it's going for minus 3, 0, minus 2. And tier 1 spell is exhausted. Uh, wait, wait a second. Um, how come we're getting different recipes if... We're not. I did replay. Uh, no, I mean, um, are the steps never going down at all? They're changing. It went down to four at one point, and then it went back up. So two one zero, trying to build minus two zero minus two minus two zero minus two. Okay, so this. Uh, and this one is not castable at the moment when okay. we start, right? So let's replay the same step every time. Okay, sorry. Uh, the ref to the chosen recipe will always have eight steps, so you don't recompute it from the current state anymore. That's true. So storing that recipe and not recalculating it is bad for us. This chosen recipe thing that we just did. Well, that's that's what I what I understand is how come. The steps that are in that recipe will be recalculated. Right, but they are from what we're. Uh, what are we printing on screen? Aren't we printing those steps on screen? It's the same seven every time. That's the problem now, right? We've introduced a bug, I think, by pulling that chosen recipe. Oh, okay, gotcha. We're printing. Okay. Hang on a sec. All right. I need to, uh, yeah, so, so uh, he, uh, whoever said it, but he's right because we we saved the um, the reference, the recipe. We need to we need to basically pop off a step each time and and play that. Right. That's that's what's uh, that's what's. That's going why I was on. trying to save just the ID of the potion we were going right. for. So we would keep going for the same potion, but we'd recalculate its recipe each time. Right. Uh, gotcha. Was where I was headed. All right. I yeah. need to go. Um, so let me see if I can find someone to raid real quick. Uh, live coders. Any other uh, people on? Uh, yeah, look at. Uh, let me look at the live let's streams. See, let's try that. Uh, doo -doo. There's a bunch of them. It's this guy is doing it in C sharp. Oh, that's me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jobs. You got this guy doing it in Java. He's bronze. That's close. Cool. Thanks for the follow, Saint yeah. Lucifer. I'll try. I'll try and it's stream for French, more of this. Uh, and if nothing else, I'm definitely next Friday gonna be doing it again. Um, so let's go hit. That that's a French uh, stream, oh, yeah, though. That's not gonna be good. Are any of these in English other than mine? Uh, the one with 76 spectators is. The one with seven spectators is. Oh, yeah, Sonder Gunnar, I was looking at him yesterday a little bit. Let's try him. I wish I could copy-paste here. S-O-N-E-R. All right, so I'm going to say Raid Channel. And I'm going to pick Sonar Gunnar. There we go. And I say thanks, everybody. Sorry, i got to run. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Phil. See right. you, Steve. And Bye. it's a little bit premature because it'll take 10 seconds for this countdown. All oh, right, you know, <laughs> I always forget um, that.
But then, but then it'll be time for a raid. All right, everybody go jump in and, and raid Soner and, and say hi from our Dallas and uh, Snowfrog. Thanks. Bye. See ya.